Call to order the uh, November 28th regular meeting of the city, Dayton City Council to stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I need a motion and a second for the agenda. I'll motion. I'll second. Okay, I got a motion and a second. Any adjustments? Uh, can we move, maybe this is the right thing. Move item E to the end of the meeting, please. Okay. I would also suggest item C um, until after, after J. After okay. J? Okay. So we're going to move C after J and then E after K. Oh boy. That All right. get confusing, so perfect. C after J and E after K. I guess it didn't matter to me where, where it was. I just That's feel like we need to have the budget discussion first. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, any other adjustments? So given those changes, um, I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries 5-0. Agenda, the, co uh, the consent agenda has item C and E pulled out. I need a motion and a second. A motion. I'll second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, under B, I was going to talk to you earlier today, Zach, but out of time. Uh, I forget what page it is. Corn main maintenance for 67K. What was that for? 67K. I don't know if that was maintenance. Wasn't that for the AMI system? Uh, it just says maintenance, I believe. I think there was a, some. There was an item above that for six thousand seven hundred. Seven thousand there. Yeah, it was for um, drain tile stuff for this project out here. Some drain tile material and some drains. Okay. There was also because you yes. answered this for yep. me. There was a sixty thousand dollar charge uh, for a, the AMI system AMI. or some AMI. part of that. I think that's, that's what, what Scott okay. said. Yeah, well. that's what I'm. Yeah. yeah, it's parts and whatever else to get in the process for one and. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I have Go a, ahead. On a, item F, this is the... <coughs> item F? No, it's not item F. So I'm goofing this up. Um, yeah, how did I get that? So we've got... Uh, I'm not seeing it. Um, we've got an item around attendance of meetings. Oh, yes. Well, that's item F. Yep. That's item F. That's item the next item. Yep. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong agenda. That would help. Um, at any rate, I'm just wondering how um, how we're enforcing that. I mean, I'm in favor of having it. Um, is this a, like an annual, you know, count out how many meetings you get went to oh, at the end when of the we, year? You know what? You Are we going to have specifics about this? Yeah, we could talk. We'll, we'll touch base on this when we get to item F. Okay, so we'll right, have to I, was, I, was, I was wondering the same yep. questions on, on F. We'll yeah, touch so base on that. I'm ahead of myself. Um, so no, I didn't have any other questions around that. Anybody else? Items. Okay. Um, all in favor of passing consent, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion carries unanimously. Now we are to open forum. Is anybody here for open forum? Anybody online? So we do have a few people through the Zoom. If you wanted to speak in open forum, use the raise your hand function. Not Nobody? Seen. All right. On to staff, consultant, council updates. Zach? Yes, Mayor and uh, Council, I only have one update tonight. We, I did discuss it or send out an email about it uh, about a week and a half ago or so about um, the fire engine and how we're going to pay for it. I do want to have the discussion again just to make sure we're all on the same page when um, we do um, make the decision. I um, do want to give some information. So prepaying for the fire engine gets us a 12% discount. It's roughly $160,000. Um, we are able to pay for this. Um, we will run negative in that fund. However, we have pooled cash, so we'll just come out of essentially, it would come out of another fund um, for temporarily until we're able to reimburse it with the future tax dollars that we had assigned at the last meeting. Um, those dollars would essentially look at coming out of 
temp fund or the water fund or something temporarily until they got reimbursed back to us. Again, we just run negative in that fund for a little bit. We do have pooled cash, so we do have the total cash on hand. Would we like to do the 12% discount, which is roughly 160 grand, or would we rather hold on to the money, allocate the interest for the next three years, and then pay it once we receive the vehicle? So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there'll be more questions, but and I'm here to answer them, and I just need direction of what to do. Um, normally, we'd have these things budgeted out, and it would just be pay for it and good to go, but because we get a 12% discount, it's essentially guaranteeing a 4% return. It's a 4%, for, that's what it's we're for, doing. Yeah, for, per, per year. year. Per year. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I can't guarantee anything in the future market with investments, so. Yeah. Um, what do our, I mean, we typically lock into very low risk. Yeah, we don't have very, so very low risk. It would not any. be very likely to get that 4%. Mm, yeah, depending on the market. If it stays right. the way it is, we're roughly right around 4%. Right. 4 point, was it last, 3.2 or something like that was the last um, 90 day or the return on, bit of return. Um, that but, saves how much? Um, $160,000. Okay. So it does take off roughly a whole year of that last year. Um, yeah. We did talk about when we um, went to the scenario of the payments, it was how do we ramp up to get those extra future dollars? It would take mm -hmm. essentially take off that last year of, um, I think it was 2027 we had, though, extra dollars coming in and we, we could essentially write that last tax levy off if we pay for it up front um, whether whether the city can get it or not i know there's five and a half right now too percent interest yeah yep so we we will get as best as we can and right now like i said right now it's great right now. um investments are really good but again i don't yeah. in a year and a half it, it could be terrible i don't yeah. know again yeah, so. if you look at the longer term cds they're actually lower so. correct <laughs> yeah so we we are typically investing in something around three-year cds yeah um or shorter, just because I don't know the market and take what we can get and from there. But. Uh, the only thing I mentioned to Zach about that, and I don't know if it's a thought. No, you, you just said you, we have the, the cash, but mm -hmm. there's also 500 grand sitting in the kitty for uh, fire department land, if you needed to take from there. I believe we have that 500 set aside already. We do. Yep. Yep. I think we need the land for that, though. Huh? I think we need the land, so I put the money aside. Yeah, but we're not buying it. As soon as we decide on this fire engine, I don't believe. I don't even think we've got the land located. We have the money <laughs> sitting in various funds. So yeah, I, I mean, personally, I think we can work the land deal out in a uh, development deal. That's probably could. But how I would do it. So our, our last audit, I don't remember where we were sitting for, for days of cash on hand. Are these um, kinds of funds, like the temp fund and whatever, other capital funds we've got. Those are not included in that 40% fund balance is what you're referring to, mm -hmm. um, which is just our general fund or just our operations fund. So it doesn't have any impact on that? No, it does not. This it's is a... Liquid cash. Correct. It does not have a total look at the liquid cash. It just looks at just the general fund operations. Um, if we become and say we get the end of the year we are under the 40%, we will have to transfer in from another mm -hmm. fund to make sure we have enough cash to get through that half a year or that 40% of the year before we get to our tax settlement for the general fund, because that's where our main revenue source is for the operations of the city. Um, we haven't had to do that in recent past because we've had so many building permits, but this year is not as healthy as previous years. So we'll see what, what happens. Up to, by the way, what, what do you mean? For permits this year. I want to say 187 oh, or 189. Okay. I thought it was about two and a quarter. Nope. It's not that high. Not that high. This slows real fast in about October or November. They yeah. slow way down. But so. it's still higher than what I thought it would be. So. Yep, correct. Cool. So, yeah, I just need to have direction of which one to do. I'm happy to do either one of them. We can just hold off and say we're not going to pay for it and take the interest, or we can say take the $160,000 decrease and call it a day, and, or it's just a not decrease, discount. If, twelve percent. And I might ask this before, but if we prepay, and mm -hmm. say a year down the road, or two years down the road before they've even started work, is there any way to recoup that? Or well, they're, they're guaranteeing the thing by X dates, from what I understand. Oh, I, mean, I would refer to. But Chief let's Edison say in a year from now we realize we need a different engine. All right. I we, we asked this during the fire thing, and I think the answer was we could just return it at any given time. Mayor, members of the council, yeah, the where Pierce Manufacturing is currently right now is that if we weren't able to take delivery of that truck for whatever reason, their confidence in reselling that vehicle is very high, just right. based upon a, now, yeah. a little fact, length. Because of the waiting period. In yeah. fact, they probably, 
mm -hmm. make money, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Given the demands. It finds okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm of the belief of bird of the hands, we're two in the bush, so if we can guarantee 4%, it's about what we're getting now. Interest rates might go below it, but they could go down, so I'm I'm okay with it. I'm okay with either option, but if I were to make the decision mm -hmm. for myself, I'd just say take the 4% percent discount, four percent per year discount or 12% total. That's where I'm at. I think, yeah, given given our fund balance, I, especially yeah. the temp fund, I, I think I'm in the same spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a real strong feeling on it. I think it works. Yeah, because it's right. not like it's one way really good or bad, so it's kind of like which one do we want to do? And and it does lock us into 4%. Correct. Yeah. It locks Back us into 4%, which is, which is nice. So. Yeah. Okay, sounds mm -hmm. good. That's yeah. what I'll do. Thank you so much. Amy? Um, the only thing that I wanted to clarify is the second meeting in December. Um, second. Oh. That we technically need to change or um, figure out when you want to hold that meeting. And we always so that historically, just it's just been a payment of claims. Yeah. We've done it like an earlier morning meeting, and right. it's been very short and sweet. So, and the twenty sixth, yeah, that's kind of a bad day, right? Twenty sixth is a technical city holiday. Yep. So, um, does it have to be on Tuesday? Does it have to be after that? Um, it could be on the twenty seventh. It could be on the. It could be before that too, I believe. Twenty first. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when you're billing, when it makes sense for your billing. So. Um. It does. I don't think it much matters either one of it those days. Yeah, I'm, I'm wide open. Twenty. Yeah. We only need three. So. Only need three. Twenty seconds fine. I can do the twenty yeah, second or twenty seventh. Seventh, as long as it's early. Twenty second or seventh. I don't need one. Yeah. I'd prefer the twenty second over the twenty. Okay, let's do the twenty second. Words. And that's we early do, early. Do that in the morning, right? Eight a.m. or something. Seven a.m. I've just been told I can't go fishing now. Six thirty. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Time you think it ain't. You tell me, yep, just that much uh, more sooner. Seven a.m. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. What time do you usually come in? Actually, wait. Um, yes, I don't have my kids that day, so I can be okay. here at any time. Otherwise, daycare doesn't open until seven thirty. I'd prefer earlier the better. But yes, yeah, so I can do seven that day. Sure. Okay, so this is the 22nd, 7 a.m. What's the hurry? <laughs> we only need three Scots. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Get your beauty rest, Scott. <laughs> I'll make some coffee. Trying to, try to get done before work, Scott. <laughs> or Mrs., you know, have to shift work as little as possible. What's work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm reminding you. <laughs> okay, so we'll hold that meeting at 7 a.m. December 22nd. That's all I needed for today. Uh, okay. Um, morning. Uh, Mayor and Council, I just have a couple of short updates today. Um, well, head treatment plant um, is moving ahead. There's a crane out there. We've been getting some comments from people. Um, we're going to be uh, putting some more information up on the, the website. Um, it will be updated every two weeks, uh, what the, the progress is and what the next two weeks uh, outlook is going to be. Um, up to now, um, they've done some initial site excavation uh, to prepare a spot so they can start putting in the uh, shoring, the metal sheeting that's going in now. Um, the security <laughs> fencing is uh, pretty much installed. Um, the, uh, they've uh, potholed a bunch of areas to find all the, the um, water mains and all the uh, utilities that are around the site, um, which in fact, they move. They are going to actually move the, ten, the footprint of the building one foot e east and one foot north, just to uh, avoid some of these uh, uh, utilities that are in the ground there. In the next two weeks, uh, they're going to continue putting in the shoring. Um, uh, to, it's an earth retention system, so they can work safely when they're doing the excavation for the base slab and the wet well, and they're going to be. Uh, forming up the wet well floor slab in the next couple of weeks, so they're making uh, progress. Uh, they've also been uh, uh, sending in the shop drawings uh, for all the equipment that we're, we're purchasing. Um, there's been some changes to those shop drawings, they're working on those, so that is going on in the background. Um, so that's good that that is all going ahead at a good pace, so that should help us get the equipment to us quicker. 
Hey Marty, for that, do we have money set aside to fix any of the trails or the landscaping yeah, for that's, the park area? That's, that's, that's they are uh, the contractor is um, going to be doing that uh, restoration work after as part of the contract. When it's all done, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the hydro tank in the old village is back up and running, is back in service. Um, so that touchwood went uh, smoothly uh, from one thing to the other. Um, and getting it back online is uh, uh, like a brand new tank in there, so we should have another few years of service out there, at least 10 years, I would imagine. Um, parks, um, we've put the temp ice rink up at Sundance Woods today, so cool. we'll see if we get any ice this year. All right. <laughs> 40 degrees by the end of the week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not going to help. No. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Uh, this Thursday is Holly Dayton. Um, so we'll have the parade uh, down South Diamond from Balsam over to Pineview. Um, we're also doing uh, pictures with Santa Claus and Grinch, as well as mini donuts, s'mores with some fire pits, and uh, pictures with Santa and the Grinch as well, if I didn't say that already. Mm -hmm. Um, so it should be a good time. Hope uh, everyone can make it. Um, secondly, uh, something I've done in the past, uh, I want to challenge the fire department um, tonight through the end of the year looking for donations to help maybe a, a single family within the city of Dayton that is less fortunate than some of the members of the organization. So if there's people that are watching or if anyone knows of anyone that needs uh, maybe Christmas meal or additional toys or whatever for the holiday season, if they could reach out to me and let me know, um, if they could send an email to my email address that can be found on the city website, um, we will collect donations from the firefighters and then um, provide a gift card or whatever it is that uh, we can accommodate for them. Chase? Amy? Not for me. Scott? I'm good. I'm good. Nothing for me. I have two items. I think last week, Mayor, you brought up Dayton Road and Pioneer having no light for a resident to reach out. I did look. There is no light there. So if we want to get one there, we might want to have a conversation about it. <coughs> Thoughts? Yeah. Put a light in. Don't like lights, but yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it makes sense. It will eventually be a major intersection that's going to be a major I, yeah, easement. I, so. yeah. Right. That's a, it. It's like like going to be a, a major road, and, and yeah. I did notice that, too, that yeah. it, after driving by it all this time. Um, there isn't one there, but there is on Riverdale Zero Road, yeah. and uh, it doesn't make sense that there'd be one, not the other. Right. I agree. Especially, you know, an intersection that's clearly got a lot of traffic, so. Can staff take that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, we'll take that. And the second thing, Marty, do we have a map of, like, horse trails around the city? Maybe where there's gaps in, like, connectivity in horse trails, or how one could get from one side of the city to the Rivers Park District horse trail, anything like that? For horse I'm runners. not aware of no. any horse trail map. I haven't seen one. Um, Ever was. Does Three Rivers no. have one? Three Rivers has a horse trail in right the city. Even with the horse association, they never had a map. The, the only horse trails that are marked are in, actually in the park. Okay. In Three Rivers right. Park, there isn't any horse trails. Um, they can ride the ditches. They can ride city streets. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if they can ride county roads. But Think if this but yeah, they can ride alongside city streets. Yeah. And um, can they go alongside city paths? Um, I don't know about that. Uh, the ditch line is what they generally uh, tend to stick to. Okay. The only place that I've really seen them go down is Zanzibar, uh, down into the park district down there. That's the main Are you talking about like trails? Well, yeah, like trails. Yeah, if you were a horse owner and you didn't live right next to his park district, but you wanted to get there, I'm trying to figure out how you get there. And so, if you could go, if you didn't want to go on the county roads, and I could totally understand why one wouldn't want to, yep. if they can go down, like not on the path, but next to the city paths that we have, yep. that would help a lot of them get around to be able to go then to Three Rivers Park District. I mean, it's a Three Rivers Park District can be a pain sometimes to have in your backyard, so trying to find ways to utilize that most, I think, is helpful. So the, the only complaint you're going to get on that is the um, horse um, droppings. That's why I said on the side, like not on the path, like next to the path, city path. Yeah, it's, of them it is a mile just go wherever they want. I think where the, the, the things that you'd have to consider is where, where the, if the horses are boarded, where they're boarded, and you know, okay. 
how they how they get access to because I know there's the stables on uh, North Diamond that cross over there and go down Zanzibar. It's a convenient way for them to get into the park there. Um, I don't know how many active riders there are in some of these other boarding facilities around. And I know on West French Lake Road stables, they use the, indo uh, the indoor arena there for most of their riding. So, um, okay. I think whenever you, so if you were to open up, see the trails to that, I, I think the horse owners would be fine with it. I'd be fine with it. The problem is somebody who's not familiar with horses would be not fine with it because suddenly there's this big beast right next to them. And or they do something stupid and try to reach up and touch it. Mm -hmm. Or they do yeah. something dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe stupid. But, so like yeah. the park, they always have, they have the bigger trails and then they have a separate trail for the horses. For the horses. Um, I don't know. I, I just think like last week we talked about trying to keep things rural. Yeah. That's something we can do as long as we can to help those people around here that maybe, uh, have horses because there are a good number of them and oh, and maybe, uh, it maybe brings we can business into the city. So. Might just maybe the need to add on to that con that rural conversation that we're due to have. Is not the Dayton Horse Association still going? I don't no, know I have no clue. No. They stopped mm, okay. probably 10, 15 years ago. Okay. I just didn't know if we had it mapped out or like that. Or Okay, perfect. That's all I have. Actually, it was about 2006, if that tells you anything. That's what the last time we had. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> okay. We are done with that. Let me get back to the agenda. Okay, council business, public hearing, F, updating commission attendance. This will be a public hearing. I can open it up once we talk about it a little bit. <coughs> so, go ahead. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll take this one. Mayor, members of council, the uh, updating of commission <coughs> attendance was brought, brought to us by um, the council themselves, looking to have some sort of attendance requirement added to the code one thing that is to note is that the EDA is not in the code it's not listed in the code anywhere and so um, we'd look to amend their bylaws if we were to update this commission <coughs> attendance what the commission attendance is is a 75 percent requirement that you're at 75 percent of the meetings in an annual year it would reset at an annual year so it would be that's my understanding a calendar year and this I have a different understanding but be a calendar year um, and then that would be nine out of 12 meetings so if you miss more than three meetings um, you would be recommended to the council for removal off of the commission based on no attendance or not Lack making the attendance means. requirement would that be at the end of the year or when that <clears> once crossed? the once that position has been crossed yeah once that threshold's been missed then you would be recommended so do you miss have, the first three if you miss the first three then you if you miss one more then you're yeah. recommended for removal yeah mm -hmm. correct so the idea is that they meet once a month um, 12 meetings total if you miss more than three of them then you'd be recommended for removal if you make if you miss just three then you're fine and for so. clarity like the parks commission usually mm -hmm. at most meets 10 times a year sure so then it would be of those 10 meetings that actually happen the ones that don't happen aren't held against Co them for correct okay. yep. I just, so i got that question would be, i want to make sure we're yeah, all that would be if they had 10 meetings in a year that's why it's not on a calendar year then mm -hmm. you'd have you'd have two and then if you miss a third then technically you'd be Okay. So, this was just so it could be amended. It you know it might be you miss three and then we only have ten meetings in a whole year and then you're recommended for removal. That doesn't mean you are removed. Period. You're just recommended for removal based on the ordinance or the code update. So it's something you are removed. So the council could say, no, nope, they you know, oh, I see. we don't have to remove them. Um, you'd be recommended for removal by the staff liaison to that co that mm -hmm. commission. But we can amend the ordinance to say you are removed, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost thinking that that might be better. Better because then you don't get into any favoritism. Yeah, at this point, it's written that you yeah. would be recommended for removal, from what I understand. I'm with you. I'd rather have it just be. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather it not be a. I think it should just almost be automatic. I agree. Well, I, yeah. We'd have to vote on it, but like, as in, like, yep, we accept that that's happening. But I would, I would say it should happen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You guys have any thoughts? I'm just thinking scenario wise, like, what if somebody's ill for an extended period of time? Well, but then they're something? not. Yeah. You know, but then they're not serving the city, even though they're ill. Yeah, what I'm saying, like, wouldn't like even you know, like FMLA have a play in that kind of stuff too? Or um, FMLA, they're, 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 not, they're not an employee, right, so yeah, they yeah. wouldn't sure. fall underneath the FMLA rules. Not saying that that's not a yeah. thing to think about, but. I think it'd be kind of harsh just to say like here's your cutoff 
just because you're sick and you can't make it now. So I think, I think there has to be a little bit more give and a little bit more understanding around it versus just having a heart out. But now you're you're going to get reasons for missing meetings. Well, I'm just going to say you can have the same kind of reasons for being sick and you know having a reason to miss those meetings, I guess. I'm just... Like Scott always said, you can call into butt. meetings though too, for the sure. most part. So like, if you're sick and you're at home, you could call into the meeting and not get everyone else sick, right? Like it's part of the glory that is where we live in today. And exactly. So I don't even think that I'd be. I could see a, one or two situations where that may come up, but I just I feel like that's so unique that in which case the council can maybe then step in and say we want to make. But there are rules that say like unanimous you can only virtually decision. come into. Council meetings so many times a year, right? It was it only like two or something like that that you could council, do? but not, virtual, like not commissions. Sure, I don't know that we we have anything for that. So I don't know, Dave. You, you know, yeah, I chime in. I think that if we're going to have it, it should probably be automatic, um, because there's always going to be a story to go with with it, and then we're in a position to decide. Whose story is you know if uh, who we want to believe and who we don't or you know, do that is already it, is, <laughs> a, is the story sad enough that we should you know I think it each one is going to be a mess mm -hmm. if if we go at it that way and so I would rather have it be just straightforward um, I also think though that people should get a warning you know not that oh hey you moved three missed three so you're out. Um, I mean, people probably are responsible, should be, we're adults, right, um, for their own attendance. But I think that, you know, an email or something saying, you know, you're, you've are you missed all the meetings you can miss. So um, just to be aware, next one is yeah, going to get you off the committee. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, they said the only thing we wouldn't know is if there's not going to be a meeting later in the year. Right. So yeah. if you say, okay, yeah, you're I at three, that, I can't predict that there's going to be 12 meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, if there's only 11 now, technically you haven't made 75 percent. Now you're off the now you're yeah. off the commission. Um, again, I can't predict future meetings. Oh. That's the unfortunate part. Is that so the, then you'd have does. to say you'd have to. I mean, if if you're going to track them, or if somebody's going to track them, somebody's going to have to that warning it too and say, hey, hey, John, you got well, one more. Okay, yep. So the, this doesn't apply to the ADA, right? It, have to do it can. Different. It should. It should. It, yeah. yeah it so right now, it's it this yeah, update would be for the code. We will have to bring an EDA bylaw update because the EDA is not part of code; it's part of the bylaws. Well, we just do that right I now. guess what I was getting at was um, EDA. You know, they do. They used to at least occasionally skip meetings, but I don't know how often that happens. Park occasionally skips meetings, so should we change the seventy-five percent to just miss three meetings? Is that easier? Does that make more sense? Here's our part I have with that: if the if there's only nine meetings for the parks, for example, and then you miss three, it's you're attending half of the meetings that could happen in a year, right? You know, like that's, I, I don't know. You missed in a third, not yeah. half. Well, because you, you missed three of the nine that happened, and three of them never happened, so you only attended one meeting every other month, essentially, give or take, right? And so, I don't know, I just, I feel like if, if you, we have a lot of people that, we seem to have a lot of applicants for these, for the most part. We're not sure on applicants as of late. <laughs> And so there are people that want to actively be involved in the community. And so if there are people that are on committees that aren't showing up, that don't want to be actively involved in the role they were selected for, we should put someone on who does want to actively be involved. Yeah, at a point you, you, you could, there, you you could change the writing to say if you miss more than three meetings for the year, then... I think that's easier. That's it's easier just, than saying 70%. Be, because you're not going to surprise somebody. I mean... You know, I, I, I get your point, Matt, around it, but it's, if somebody's, you know, if you don't know you're in trouble until after the year is over because you decided there was no reason to meet in December and now that throws you over the line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's, I mean, people shouldn't plan to miss meetings and they should understand the commitment when they, when they make it. But I think it's, it would be more straightforward to just have a number because then you know what it is, you don't know. You don't wait to the end of the year and find out. Well, we, we shouldn't have skipped that meeting in July and December because mm -hmm. now I'm <coughs> out of luck. Um, <coughs> so I'd rather have it just be a number now. Okay. Thought about it out loud, I guess. Yeah, that it's easier for us to three is go yeah. with if it's 
if you miss more than three. So <clears throat> basically, we could send a warning out at two. It says, hey, you missed two. I mean, then we'd say, okay, you have one more to miss, and otherwise you miss one more. And after that, you're <clears throat> um, unfortunately removed. Because what you guys are recommending or looking to do is not have it be a recommendation by the council would be, that's it. Like, yeah. You're removed off the commission. Okay. I just want to make sure I heard correctly. And yep. Okay. Okay. Mayor, members of the council, um, if I could, mm -hmm. um, just a couple of observations about the draft ordinance. Um, the as as it's drafted, um, in the section related to the public safety commission, it's different than the way that it's drafted than the planning commission. Um, in the way that the vacancy would occur on a on the public safety commission, it simply happens by operation of. The math basically it says a vacancy shall exist that means the council doesn't have to take any action to for that vacancy to exist okay. um, and when when you talk about the the percentage or the number of meetings um, the ordinance in the the changes in all three sections refer to um, scheduled meetings not meetings actually occurring so we may want to consider different language for that um, and then also related to the Planning Commission and the Park Commission, the removal can occur um, the way that it's drafted. It says being unable to attend, um, but you've been talking about not attending and, and being unable to attend is different than is different language than what is in the Public Safety Commission just for not attending if it may be. A little parsing the language a little too much, but just to, to point out those mm -hmm. those differences, those nuances, just for your awareness and as you make your decision. Yeah, I would think we would just say not attend because you could attend via virtual as well. So as long as it complies with the open meeting law. Yep. Correct. Yep. Because any commission that's officially created by the falls under the same falls under the yeah. same rules oh, that, right. that the city yeah. council. Has <clears> to <throat> forgot about that. Are we? I think we're good. Yeah, we right. Good? I, we, I can work with Amy to make sure we have the correct language in each one of the uh, commissions. Okay. Well, this was a public meeting, right? So this is a public why did, meeting. Why was this a public meeting? Because it's in the ordinance. Um. Well, for a commission. Yeah, we kind of thought we had to have a public hearing, and we really don't. So I we posted. We posted for, we for a public hearing, so we have it. to have it. Okay. But I right. technically normally wouldn't have to have one. So mm -hmm. well, let me get back to the. All right, so I will open up the book hearing for item I have ordinance 2023-08. Is there anybody here to address? Nobody here? Anybody online? I'm not seeing any. All right, well, I will close that public hearing. <clears throat> and we're good, right? You wish to give a vote. Oh, well. Okay. So we have the, um, the vote with those amendments. Yeah, with the amendments, I think Amy, do you want to do you want to repeat those? Or you want, I mean, from what I understand is that you're not able to attend three meetings. You're automatically removed from not able if you don't attend. If yeah, you if you don't, don't attend yeah. for a failure to attend. Failure to attend. Yep. And that would be changed in section thirty-two point one six D and thirty-two point one seven C. Yes. Yes. Okay. And we'll make sure to say, do we want to say scheduled meetings or do we want to say, what was the other language you had maybe? Well, I just, it, it could be meetings that are act that actually happen, that, are, that <laughs> actually occur. Um, uh, yeah, meetings that occur that we want to change that language to. Does it matter anymore if it's the number Scheduled or? meetings, we have them scheduled every every month for the whole year. We may right. cancel them, which is what the, which is what. Amy's language is saying is that the scheduled meetings would mean that even if we don't have it, you're technically then missing that meeting. Okay. Oh. Um, if we said meetings that occur, then it would be only the ones that we actually held and not yeah. Yeah. That ones that are sense. scheduled. Agreed. I think that would make sense, meetings yeah. that occur, correct? Yes. Yeah. Sure. And then what will happen, and what I'm going to have to lean on Amy on this one, is because the EDA is not part of the commissions in the code, which is why you're not seeing it here. Right. I would recommend, I'm, I'm not sure what happens if we say, okay, all commissions have to follow these rules. Does that mean that it's automatically added to the bylaws of the EDA? That's what I don't know. I think we'd have to bring the bylaws of the EDA 
up as an update. I would think so. I would. You, you, they would need to be amended. Okay, that's what I would. That's what. And I would then think. we're gonna amend that a vacancy shall exist instead of recommended for. Yes, yeah, which means that you're not going to be recommended. You will be removed. So, good. Okay, I need a motion and a second for that. I'll motion that. I'll second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries unanimously. Item G. Yeah, Mayor and members of council, we had a work session on this before, but we can continue conversation on this. I know that there was um, consensus about the cannabis portion. I believe there was census on the electronic delivery device. We wanted to include it the same way we did cannabis because of the fact that we could have the vaping include the THC from what I understood. I think the last part of the conversation needed to happen was tobacco, um, but um, I could be wrong and I want to make sure everyone's on the same page before we open the public hearing and close the public hearing once we have that happen. So, um, As far as the vaping goes, we were talking about vaping with THC. cannabis. Correct. Yeah, okay. Correct. So that's where we left out the conversation of, okay, you can do that, are we going to then put that in the ordinance to say that is not allowed or, you know, just like it is cannabis, or are we going to say that that's more deemed toward tobacco? So that was where we left off the conversation of the electronic device. Do we want to have the open? I think you lost me on that one. So the electronic. Yeah. The, yeah, so I think everyone was consensus that we want to um, make cannabis illegal to smoke in all the public places, just like it does alcohol, just like we have it in the same spot there. But with yep. tobacco, we were, you were from what I had gathered is that you were more on the line of we didn't want to restrict that. Yep. The the middle ground is that um, e-delivery or whatever yep. you want to call it from vaping. what I understand. Vaping, vaping because it would you sure. could use both. You could use either with tobacco or you could have THC in that so how mm. do we deal with that portion? Well they can't use the THC stuff right? But, they but how are you going to know? How are you going to know? Yeah. Well, According I mean, to Chief the Smell. So I asked earlier no, about each other. No, no, for vaping, you wouldn't be able to uh, yes. notice okay. the smell, but you'd notice in the label on the package itself or the container, the vape. Right. And, I mean, if anybody has a, a can of Coke, you don't know that there's not some, um, you know, jack, jack in there. Jack in there. So right. I, I, to me, it's, if we're saying you can't have cannabis in the park, then that, that's, that falls under it. But if you have regular for lack of a better term, regular vaping compound in there, then I don't have a problem with it. No, the simple way, to, simple way to handle it is is you you just add in vaping with any THC product is also included in this. So my question to you is then if somebody, you could see clearly them using an electronic cigarette, we're going to have a police officer go up to them and check the container? Well, that's just a, it's just a general right, question. Yes. Just making sure I understand what we're looking at, because mm -hmm. we're saying one's illegal not and one's not. Then we have to check physically to figure out which one that they're doing. You can you can have the the ordinance in place. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, just because you have a speeding limit doesn't mean everybody abides by it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I was going with the whole thing too. So I mean, it's just something that it's there, but it's going to be difficult to enforce, and you're probably going to most of the time just let it go. I, yeah, I'm laws are only forced by complaint anyways. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna defer to the chief on that. I don't. I'm just asking the question. Yeah, I, my guess is, um, unless there's you know some probable cause to suspect that they're smoking THC or vaping. Correct. We'd have to have probable cause. You just leave it up. Leave that. it be. Just like the can of Jack. So right. So you can write it to include it. So it sounds like we're writing it to not I, include it, or I, we are? I believe that it may be already covered under the cannabis products under 342.01, because it does talk about cannabis concentrates. Yep. Okay. So there you go. It's already covered. Okay. Okay, so. Yep, yeah, this is what we're getting So yep. Amy, Amy, are you good with the direction we're good to go? You, okay, perfect. <laughs> Want to make sure you're right in the ordinance. So, <laughs> all right, I will open up the uh, <clears throat> public hearing for ordinance 2023-09, uh, updating tobacco cannabis use in public places, spaces. Sorry, do we have anybody here for that? Do 
we have anybody online for that. So if you wanted to speak in the public hearing, use the raise your hand function. Not seen right, we will close that public hearing. Um, so, given I will have Amy review the updates that we had to the amend or the ordinance that we did because we did amend it and we have some things that we want to make sure we're amended correctly before we make a motion in a second. Is this, second. yeah, so we want to table this? Nope, or, I, no, we're think, good with I it. I think we're good with it. I just want Amy to go through the changes that you guys have made from the ordinance that was provided in the okay. council packet to what we're going to look to motion a second on tonight this is my understanding so <laughs> it, to the extent that we need to amend the proposed ordinance we would have to we want the regulation and of cannabis consistent with the way that alcohol is regulated in public spaces um, and this may result in changes to some of the definitions that we list in um, the new definition section of the proposed ordinance um, in section 90-90.10 90 and 90.11 um, and then we also are going to maintain a ban on the use of cannabis in public spaces and including on the in the parks and on sidewalks is that correct but tobacco will not be banned on sidewalks but in the park or did i get that backwards uh I think tobacco's excluded i think yeah, yeah I think we was, i think so it's just a ban on cannabis in the parks okay. and on sidewalks and tobacco can be used in public spaces generally yeah, we just would pull tobacco out of here. Okay. I think that was the, at least the. <coughs> Leave it as it is. Okay. And then um, we would, when it comes to an electronic delivery device, that would apply only to a ban on the use of those devices for cannabis. Is that correct? Right, they couldn't have the cannabis. I think they can have the device. They just can't have the. They can't use it in that. They can't use that as a as a delivery method. Is that what you're? What you mean? They just can't yeah. use. The in a public in a public place. Yep. Correct. Okay, I think we're on the same page for that. Okay, so I think generally we will we will have to make uh, amendments to the proposed ordinance as I just recited in those sections, um, and in. The prohibited activities um, for the, what would be new section 90.12 and also the, in the park rules generally I think this we would continue um, with the proposed changes um, in section 3 of the draft ordinance um, as we would be amending section 130.17 related to drug paraphernalia I think those changes are unaffected by what your conversation has been if I'm understanding it correctly because those changes are essentially just in <coughs> conformance with the state statute anyway yeah so I was going to ask something about that okay um, why the state statute already covers this Again, why are we duplicating that, or does it not? I, I, I don't. Under, I don't. Uh, You're talking about why are we having the ordinance at all? Well, the the drug paraphernalia. I, I don't. I don't. I think um, because it, part of it is because if the state statute changes, but then then I mean, if you had if you had an ordinance that says. We simply, you know, yeah. we just our or, our ordinance is is the same as the state statute, and you cite to the state statute section. It's sometimes hard to maintain a code where you can't keep up with legislative changes. So if you yep. have your own and can be more restrictive, which you can be when it comes to um, the the drug paraphernalia part of this. Yep. Um, I mean that's that's one reason why you could do it. I mean if 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 you if you don't want to maintain the, the the proposed changes, we can certainly, you know, adjust them. The one of the things that I, that I thought was um, that I thought was important was 
the, the, the definitions and the, the restrictions in um, the code section 130.17 are really detailed and very, um, I, I honestly, I couldn't find the source of where those came from. I mean, they don't mirror the state statute um, or any version of and the my state guess statute is, that I've ever seen. So right, my guess is they um, were done and they're out of date and right. and that's my concern right is now we have an ordinance that may follow state statute but tomorrow when they change it now we have something different mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand the duplication it's already encoded in statute right it just seems so yeah if it's already covered it then we don't need it well then what we'd have to do is um, s strike this this section altogether uh -huh. um, and any cross references to it throughout the rest of the code um, so that would just be um, it would just be a different um, we'd have to make sure that we're not creating inconsistency throughout the rest of the code and that's and that's just a um, that would just be a function of that we that we would normally do anyway and you know, the other thing about this is, is the stuff that I think is, is, you know, people would, would associate with, with, you know, evils would be needles, and they're explicitly <laughs> exempted. So right. really, this is talking about bongs, I think. And, right. I, I mean, and I have no problem if, I, I now that if. If this is the way the state's going towards legalizing it, if somebody's got a bong in their car, I'd if it's I have a hard trunk, time. If it's in the trunk, it shouldn't be. A I just have a hard time being concerned about that. But I don't know. Well, this is only in public spaces. So right. your car in that example wouldn't matter anyways. Well, then I think I it, can do it without. does as it relates to, you know, if you get pulled over and you've got a bong in the front seat, I think you've got problems. But this ordinance doesn't have anything to do with that, correct? No. Yeah, that's no. my point. Yeah. This you've got other problems. You've got lots of problems if that's what you're you've got a bond in the front seat. Yeah. This is a separate section of the of the code than we've been talking about. It's not in the same chapter as the as the parks um, or other public spaces that we've been talking about. Um, let me just bring up the because it's in section, it's in Title 13 of General Offenses, and it's the the Public Peace and Safety Code. So it is more the police's um, standard domain than um, the zoning code, so, so to speak. You know, yeah, I mean, so this, this kind of it looks like if you're if you're pulled over and you have a bong in front seat, this would apply. Yes. So. Oh, this is not just the. Not in public spaces. No. Right. This, that, that's, this is part of the public. This is part of the public safety section of the, of the code. Um, you know, I th I, at, at this point, I think you know, given the the extensiveness of the changes that we're talking about to the to the draft ordinance, it may be wise to table, to table this it. to I bring back a new version of the. Sure. Turned into. Kind of you know, you can you can yeah. we need a work session. you can do that without um, holding another public <laughs> we need hearing. Another work session, so. Guy. <laughs> okay, so I'll we, make a motion to table it. Did you say we can do that with our other Correct. public hearing? We no, already had the public hearing because the public it. hearing has been held and been and been um, closed. Okay. Um, you could, if you wanted to, depending on how much different this is, but I think or yeah, how I different it'll change. Um, but we're looking at making it less restrictive than more restrictive. More less complicated. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, so. So I'll second that motion. So we have a motion to table it. Travis, Scott, any? Until you guys get it written. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Five to zero to table it, and we are off to item H. Purchase agreement for one eight five four one Levy Street. Yep. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of council. Here to um, get a purchase agreement approved for one eight five four one Levy Street, which was the approved RFP received from Riverview Villas at the October twenty fourth, twenty twenty three council meeting. We're trying to get. This finished up so we can try to get this property transferred over before the end of the year. So, if you have any questions, um, City <coughs> Attorney Amy Schmidt and myself uh, both uh, went through the agreement. We reviewed it with the applicant, uh, or I should say the buyer, and he is willing and able, or I should say they are willing and able to 
move forward with this. So, stand for any questions. I have one that, just because I wasn't clear on what it meant, on page um, 54, uh, the buyer has until December 31st, 2025 to complete phase one of their project or the city will be able to buy it back with the improvements done to the property. This was a requirement of the buyer's lending agent because of exposure. I, I guess I don't understand what... Is it in the in the purchase agreement or in the staff yeah. report? Sorry, it's in the staff report. It's in the staff report. Okay. So the reason why that was put in there as the definition and the reason why it was we had to pay for the improvements is because the buyer's lending agent is not willing to risk their exposure with. Okay, they're going to lend the individual money to start the project. Let's say they get halfway through the project and then everything goes belly up and they say I can't meet that deadline anymore. Now the bank has exposed themselves to all the dollars because they're going to come back to the city at at nothing. So they're going to come back to the city and say, um, we previously had the um, agreement written that everything will be forfeited by the buyer and it will be given back to the city. And so because of that, one of the requests from the buyer was that there has to be some exposure risk mitigation because otherwise he's not going to be able to get a mortgage on the property to do any work. Um, because the bank's not going to say, yep, we'll, we'll back you for it, and then when they have no collateral left on it because the city now owns it, now what are they going to do with their money? So let's say they have, yeah, if they have a $500,000 loan, you they went through 300000 of it as construction stuff, and then in the agreement we write everything gets forfeited because the idea is to try to push the project forward to keep mm -hmm. moving. Sure. Um, and if they we say, take okay. away their collateral. Correct. If we say, okay, nope, now you just forfeit everything because now you don't have the project. Now the bank's out the money, not the individual. Mm -hmm. Or not the company, I mean, sorry. So the reason being is that we'd have to pay for the improvements so that they could, that we, wouldn't, we would not pay the individual or the company. We would pay back whoever the mortgage is. We wouldn't pay back to the... Because the improvements are being funded by a mm -hmm. third party, not by the company, if that makes sense. Yeah. It, and I see where there's a, a fairness piece about this. It also seems like we're the bank is shifting the risk to us. Yeah, because we'd have to buy it back. Yep. Buy it back plus improvement. Correct. Yep. You got it. So then we'd have to find somebody to finish it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, that without that language, we. My guess is this purchase agreement won't be signed by the buyer. I'm just being, from what I've gathered, is that it's not going to be easy for them to be able to find financing that's going to say, yeah, pull back even if you don't, do that. don't have any collateral on it. Yeah, not from, yeah. A, not from a bank. You have to find private funding. I, Co I could maybe work for a bank something. There's a bank that would approve language without that. Correct. And, and I'm not saying that the, you know, yeah. you're wrong with that because that's what no. it is. But uh, yep. I just I wanted to understand it. And yep. And it, we are accepting some liability mm -hmm. in a failed project. By Correct. Yeah, at accepting. least through 2025. Maybe it's, maybe it's necessary. I understand that, that part. Or we just say nothing, and then we say, if they don't build it, then we have no risk. Um, so that the other way is to say, well, then we just hope that they get it done. And if they don't get it mm -hmm. done, then we have, you know, we have no obligation to buy it back, but we also have no obligation to push them to get the project done. So that's the other half of the process. If the end of 25 comes and they're 90% complete, can we choose to just let it go mm -hmm. past that date. Yep. So part of the agreement was that we have an amendable date that would be yeah. if they agreed upon by Offer both parties. Yep. Whatever the case yep. Would be, yeah. We would just have a agreement. It would be data staff level of yep, you're good to go. Just continue yeah. going forward and finish up and try to do our best. But you know, if all of a sudden we're they're ten percent short, and all of a sudden we get to the middle of the following year and they're still not done, then maybe we could make sure. Correct. Then we can amend, we can amend at that time. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see anything anything in here. But it, as far as what what we are asking to be built, we are not asking anything to be built at this time. That would be part of the concept plan, preliminary plat, final plat process. When they would, because they have to come in through as part of the as part of the um, steps, they have to get through all the planning and development process by August first of next year. Mm -hmm. So that means they have to have concept plan approved or concept plan done, preliminary plat approved, and final plat approved because they are platting <coughs> the properties. And we're replatting them, yep. so yep. along with rezoning them and stuff. So if they don't have that done, then they forfeit the property back to us. Well, and the buyer is obligated to um, 
proceed with a plan that's consistent with what they submitted in response to Correct. the RFP right. that you right. all have reviewed. One of the three. Mm -hmm. One of those three. So okay. the language is a little okay. um, open-ended for that so that they can work through the process with, with staff on, you know, what is what you know, what it'll what's look like best. Down Whether it's right. three, two, two tries or three do's. Whatever you yeah. add. Sure. They add. Okay. So they can't come in and do, you know, right. a ten-story building or something like that. It has to be consistent with what they have okay. already submitted. Okay. Plus, we we'll have sure. lots of opportunities to give feedback. Do what? We we'll have lots of opportunities to give feedback with concept mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I need a motion and a second. I'll motion to approve. I'll second. Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. <clears throat> Motion carries 5 0. Item I Plans and authorized bids for HMGP generators. DB Mayor and Council, uh, being on this project has been around seemingly forever. I figured I would take a. <laughs> right. A little bit of time just to give some quick background of um, how this project originated and where it sits today. So the original scope of the project or the desire was that the city would install backup power sources at some of the infrastructure in the city. Um, one of the locations being here at City Hall Fire Station 2, the other at Fire Station 1, the activity center in the village, and then the third being the Well House 2 located on North Diamond Lake Road. So the FEMA put out a, a grant program. It's called the HMGP uh, Hazard Mitigation Grant Program for situations such as this. So in, in August of 2020, we started working on an application to submit for a grant um, for the project. Um, quite a process getting through that. The grant was finally awarded in December of 2021, at which time um, COVID hit us full steam. There was a retirement, um, there was a shortage of chips, it was impossible to get generators, nobody would guarantee prices so past 14 phone days, phone. Um, which is not long enough to allow <laughs> bids, so the project just got shelved. So spring of 2023, the supply of generators are coming back. Um, HSEM, who is the administrators of the grant, that's uh, Homeland Security Emergency Management, um, Communications were opened back up with them and, uh, and the project has, has restarted, if you will. So in the fall of 2023, we started the design and the bid documents for this project. So just a graphical representation of where these locations are with the Northwest being Fire Station 2, or sorry, Fire Station 1, um, southern, southern, Southeast being the City Hall Fire Station 2, and then uh, Well 2, again, between those on North Diamond. So a little bit of detail, the, the, unfortunately the, the grant was put together on the project costs that were estimated back in 2020 and 2021, which was about $246,000. The grant covers 75% of that, which is about 185,000 with the local match, meaning the city participation of 61,000. Uh, due to the shortages and the other, just the time that passed, um, costs have gone up quite a bit. Um, um, for the generators. We did go back to HCSM, HSEM, to ask if there could be more grant dollars made available. They said they had around 20800 left in the pot, if you will, that they could reallocate to this project. So to the best of our knowledge, that's the additional funding that would be made available to this project. So just adding that to the previously agreed to awarded amount, um, that would put the revised grant to about 205,000 um, and then assuming the 25% local match is about 68,000 based on that number for a revised project number uh, or amount of about 275 or 274,000. So if the project were to move forward, the plans and specifications are now complete and ready to go. If council would, would like to proceed, the plans could be approved and bids authorized at tonight's meeting. Publication would go out in the paper next week and then bids would be open December 19th. Those bids could then be reviewed on January 9th. And then just based on what we're hearing for uh, equipment timelines, we, we were told to expect a full year for the construction 
um, of the project. What's the help? Help me understand why uh, the time from when we approve you to go to bids to when bids open being twenty days. Um, so there's a legal requirements on bidding times. Um, so it's over one hundred seventy-five thousand. It has to be publicly bid. So if there are special assessments, there has to be a twenty-one day advertising period. If there are not special assessments, you can go as short as a ten day notification. Thank you. And that that's just to do with the legal publication. That's what triggers that timeline. We will actually post this to um, its Quest CDN, just an advertisement. Well, bidders will see this earlier, so they'll actually have a little bit more time of bidding. But that legal, the legal uh, publication and, and opening is it's what's dictated. Does that answer? Your yes. Question? Thank you very much for explaining that. Um, so not to make this confusing, but I just uh, this is actually kind of just a, a, a preview, I guess, of, of what can be discussed at the after the bid awards. Um, I just wanted to point this out. As I mentioned, there's a set grant amount, and we are expecting a much higher bid coming in. So just want to give some assurance that we have we have talked with the administrators of the grant, and there are ways that we can alter how the project is awarded. Um, so the city may not face large charges um, uh, uh, to complete the project, unless desired. So I'll run through this very quickly. If it's too fast or you have additional questions, um, certainly let me know. So just the, the revised project amount, I went through how that was calculated, is identified, um, and that minus the indirect costs, the legal, the engineering, and the other associated costs, leaves about 247000 for construction. If the bids come in under that amount, we use the full grant amount just as originally planned. If the bids come in after that amount, identified as scenario B, then the city does have choices on how to move forward. You could reject all bids and not move forward with the project. You would be out the costs of the design and the whatever has been spent to date, and you would forfeit the grant. So I, I suspect that would not be an option to pursue. Uh, another option, and we did verify this could be done. We could eliminate one of the generators to just award two of them to bring that cost down within the, the awarded uh, grant amount. And then again, it would be the 75-25 split between the entities. Um, or the full project could still be awarded if the city would just pay the difference. So we would use, again, the full grant amount, but then anything in addition to that would be likely more than 25% of that would be responsible of the city. So I don't know if you want to go through any of that now, otherwise we can revisit when, when the bids are brought back. So our recommendation is to approve plans and authorize the solicitation of bids. Um, and then those, as mentioned, would be brought back in January for consideration. So a question, Jason, would be, just say the construction bid comes in at 256. Could we not renegotiate <coughs> the indirect cost of 17? Um, since most of them have been spent, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we could talk about it. I don't know what, how much room there would be okay. in there. But. So okay, I, I'm most. wondering, um, on it, if the uh, if the the generators of physical units themselves can be pulled out of the the bid and sourced through source well, and I'm only suggesting this if it saved money, um, but another way, as I understand it, we can look at that and not. Uh, bid the actual equipment itself, it but is, we could take their pricing because it's already been bid. It is possible to do that for projects. We have not set up bidding documents to do that here. Um, we would we would have to revisit and restructure the bidding documents um, to allow a purchase outside of this contract. In other words, this we are soliciting bids to furnish and install. Um, to move forward with that, we would be shopping, if you will, and purchasing under one contract, and then we'd be soliciting bids for the installation um, of that. That is sometimes done to, to speed up processes. Um, so it, it's certainly something that, that could be done. Um, again, it was not prepared to do that on this case. Mm -hmm. And maybe, <coughs> I'm not trying to make work, um, but maybe it could be, you know, if we get to the point where it, it's way over what we've got available, and we we need to, and it sounds like we've got the ability to uh, uh, readjust the project, eliminate a generator. 
I mean, could we have that discussion at that time? Because we'd be rebidding the project to some yeah. extent anyway, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's, I'm following, and um, yes, I would anticipate that. And my scenario B, um, number one, I, I maybe shouldn't have started at reject bids and forfeit grant. There may be, and I think this is what you're alluding to, we could reject bids and rebid. And we could use a different format if we think that would be beneficial. Um, we'd have to review that with the bidding agencies, but I assume they would be open to that. They've been very good to work with. They know the situation. They know the prices have gone up, the availability has gone down, and it's been a difficult process. So they have been very favorable to work with. Um, the other thing is the, the grant does expire um, about the time of our completion, but they've also voiced that they would allow an extension because, again, they do know the situation. So I would suspect if we did get into that situation where the bids came in too high, and we just wanted to reject them all together and rebid and still move forward with the grant that they would at least consider that as an option. Paul, did you have? Go ahead. Under these grants, it might the grant might require you to do the full project bid, um, which you might have to look into. Oh, it, might it could not be. be allowing separation because I think with the storm shelter we had to do um, a bid, flat bid for it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Chief Inga has been through one of these projects. And, uh, the question I have is, do we have to bid them as permanent generators, or could we get mobile ones and then not have the issue of where do we put them if we have to cut them down? If we have three, then we can keep them inside, well-maintained in the garage, and we, need them, we just roll them out and plug them in. We, the, the decision was made to go with the permanent. Um, I, I can't say with 100% certainty, but I think it was discussed, could it be a, per, a, a temporary? In other words, could we bid one for multiple locations? And I think there was one of the, one of the uh, qualifications or one of the criteria of the grant was that it was available immediately upon an emergency mm -hmm. instead of you know, oh. um, mobilizing. Mm -hmm. Instead of two it. hours later. Um, again, I, I, I can't say that with 100% certainty, but I do recall some of those. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I, okay. I think it was, it was a ground for a permanent generator that was going to be there in straight away. Because I know we that, did talk about that That would just save us a bunch yeah. on gas hookups, electrical. Like a lot of the concrete pads, a lot of the things that are in there oh, would save us. And the, the and we could use them where we need them. Well, when we need if we need around. all three at once, we got yeah, bigger problems. I, I, don't, I don't disagree, <laughs> but my point more or less was it, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I think the portable has got some advantages for flexibility. Yeah. What I would, um, I want to say though, is with a permanent generator, what what you get is a much faster yep. situation for back online. Yep. I don't know what the codes are relating to this kind of stuff, but the hospitals, our generators had to be literally online mm -hmm. uh, in under ten seconds. Yeah. Now there's no way yeah. Marty's getting out of. <laughs> bed and driving over a city. The yeah. public works to hook up a generator and haul it over to well four and getting it, you know. Yeah. It's going to be hours, right? Yeah. Realistically. My bed. concern was more that we looks like we need three of them. I'm going to guess the bid for three is going to come back higher than what we have, so we're going to have to select two of them of the three, if not right. less, depending on what the bids come in at. So I was trying to find a way that might give us the flexibility to fill the need we have now. But I don't disagree with you, mm -hmm. and they're definitely super quick. When you just got them there, they just flip right over and work. So, yeah. You have one at home. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. For expediency, it seems like we just roll with it as, yeah, I agree. as it is, and then deal with the problem when it you know, when, when it we get there. Yeah, I think if yes. we just go with it, and if it comes out not yeah. here, then we just re talk about having the right. discussion yep. again. All right. Now, a, a suggestion there, and I don't know if it's even possible. These are brand new generators, correct? Yeah. Yep. And you two guys did an excellent job. And they're not. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You know, <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chief. The grant requires no. Okay. <laughs> they did a good job on the other two items. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay. I need a motion. All motion. I'll second. I'll second. Right, Matt and Dave. <laughs> any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Motion carries five zero. You guys got right. to be pegged, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Item J. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of Council. We're back again for a budget recap. After the last discussion, it sounds like we had some consensus um, amongst the Council, at least the majority of the Council that wanted to look at um, reducing the levy back to giving the tax rate the exact same. 
So I wanted to provide that information back to council. I was able to put together a staff report that you may have questions on. I'm happy to hear to answer them. Um, but city staff and department heads got together and said, what can we get to get down to that $51,000 cut that we had to do? So we put our heads together and said, what can we add or subtract from to get the, again, that tax levy number is not the number you start with, it's the number that you end with. So um, ended with 18.63% tax levy increase for 2020. Four, um, which is 20.1% in the general fund and then a negative 1.5% of the EDA. So if anybody's seen the numbers from Hennepin County, they do not reduce the EDA portion. So I want to make sure everyone knows that, again, I think I mentioned it last time, but um, the EDA is included as a levy in total, but not on the county's website apparently for whatever reason. So so that uh, county, the county number that was published. Yeah, which is like 21% is not right. Okay. It says 21% because it only looked at the general fund, not at the EDA levy. The EDA levy is a reduction of 100 grand, so okay. it's it should be 19.4. That's the total levy. Okay. Um, I know the mayor has mentioned this many times. We, um, the previous finance person would only look at the general levy and not the EDA levy, but um, we look at everything, and then now it's 18.63 instead of 19.4. And essentially, what that does is make the tax rate exactly the same, uh, which you can see on the far right bar graph. And then I want to make sure everyone sees this little dollar that you see in the corner here um, related to this one home is only because of rounding, because uh, it's a rounded dollar. So it just happened to be one was 49 cents and now it's 50 cents, so it rounds up. I think the state auditor also looks at that correctly, so I'm not sure what the county's. No clue. Well, there's a lot of things we could talk about the county. Yeah. That's a different line. Yep. Yep. Um, so what would happen is if somebody had the same valuation from year over year, the taxes in the city of Dayton would be exactly the same. Exactly. If your valuation goes up, which it may have gone up, I don't, I don't know, um, that will be taken into effect. So you will have a increase based on your valuation change. But other than that, there will be no change in the tax bill from the city of Dayton for 2020. Any more discussion on this? Yep. Any more discussion will be. But I'm looking for tonight just to make sure because I want to make sure we have the right thing in for December 12th so that we're not having tons of discussion at the TNT meeting. So. I'm I'm good with the number. Um, thank you for all of you for working on that to, yep. to get bring that back in line for us. Um, what I'm not clear on anymore is uh, we've got a, a number of positions in the budget, budget both police and fire. Yep. And um, well, I think we know where we are on the fire, but in the in the police um, piece of it, and maybe that comes up when we uh, talk about those items at the end of the agenda. Um, but I, I guess I've lost track now of of what what we're actually looking to add for police in in this budget as it stands with these changes. Sure. So we are still looking at the same number of people that we've looked at since the preliminary levy was um, derived at 19.4 percent the fifty thousand dollars for the changes is minor changes that happen amongst many line items and so everyone took a little bit of a haircut and i would say every department took you know a couple thousand bucks out of each one of the departments took a look at revenues as well and added some revenues that we may have thought okay maybe we can get a little more now that we have actual numbers for 2024 you know actual numbers for 2023 i mean because we may not have gotten the grants until you know october so now we have them um actual numbers um, one of my good relate to is the police state aid I wasn't expecting to get, I think we budgeted 80,000 bucks or now and then 2024 we budgeted 85 and this year we received 93. Oh. Um, so it was way more than I anticipated, but we didn't get those till October. So when I put the numbers in in June, there's no way I'm gonna know that. Mm -hmm. So now that I know that I can increase the next year's budget by 10 grand, which then takes off the levy. So that's an easy one to change. Um, but specifically with staffing levels, we are looking at hiring three and a half staff next year, or not three and a half, mm -hmm. two and a half staff and a half next year for police. Months for police so it's the plan is to um two and a half would be the two full-time individuals to replace um the investigator and the sergeant that are needed for response and timing and coverage and whatever else and then look to hire that traffic cop um in the middle of the year to help with traffic complaints that we have within the city which are resident driven um so that's the change that we had with the with police which i think is what you're requesting okay that's what i needed clarity sure. on. thank yep. you so i think and Zach, since mm -hmm. that kind of where you cut, I don't know if that increase in the funds we got was part of when we talked last Thursday, but I know a lot of those cuts were made in public safety funds, fire, police, emergency yep. management, public works. Yep. So uh, I would 
like to motion that instead of making the cuts, we keep them where they were to make up the difference in funding so that the others on the council can be happy with where the tax rate is. We pull the 50 some thousand, whatever it is, from the EDA reserve funds. They've got, they'll have almost $600,000 there by the end of the year. I think we can do that. I asked Zach, he said we could. You, you can, yep. We can move EDA funds? <clears throat> yep. The reserve dollars they don't yeah. spend go to a different fund, is what Zach told me. So I'd motion that we, instead of cutting those funds, that we leave them and take the money from the EDA balance that has been sitting unused for half a decade now. Trying to think of if I it said you can move the dollars from the EDA because I believe they're really underneath the EDA control, <laughs> yep. but they're not budgeted for on an annual basis. That is I'm a have separate to confer, taxing I think, authority. Yeah. I just I'm surprised you can do that. Yeah, but we, I asked that we pulled it. Yeah, we so pulled. Yep. Yeah, and I, if I said that wrong, I, you know, I will take the blame. I did most certainly tell you that. So. Okay. Um, I'll have to confirm with that. We have pooled cash, though, so they're not in a separate bank account. They are pooled cash with our cash. Right, but they're So if you so dissolve the EDA, that money would go into the general fund. Um, yeah. It would be, it would be, money, it would so be transferred be into funds directed by the council at that time, correct. Yep, I can see that. I'm just trying to figure out I'm just, if you could... It strikes me as odd that we can just arbitrarily do that. but And I, I don't know that I'm yeah. ready to... To, to do that anyways. If that is an option that the council would like to go down, let me look into it more just to verify. I want to confirm it. I'm not saying that what I told you was wrong because if it was wrong, it's on me. It's not on you. I'm taking 100% blame on that. But um, I want to confirm before we start, yes, we can. Just because it's a separate taxing authority. So mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, and to be clear, because only only half of that amount was actually cuts. There, yeah, there was. I want to say yeah, I did it. It was roughly twenty five thousand. Yep. Of of cuts and twenty five thousand of new revenue. Or Correct. So whatever the ending balance, he didn't have the new revenue things when he and I talked. Correct. So whatever yeah. the ending balance is. So instead of taking the expenditure cuts, yep. you would you would recommend, from what I taking from the EDA, if we if we can, yep. if we can't, then then we know that right away. I can, I'll let you know. As soon as I know that answer, that would do what I do. But I would need direction from the council to do that, as in more than. Two or I would need a majority of the council to say look into it. If, you know, I don't want to spend time on something that's not going to pass. So when I had talked to you, you said a lot of this was kind of buffer. It's correct. That's exactly what it is. Yep. A lot so, of these are buffer things. Like I said, the idea is that we can put any number down on a piece of paper. I can't guarantee they're going to work. And this is the things that um, I know Scott had mentioned. We have contingency dollars or whatever to be able to put in there. Instead of putting one line in for contingency. We added it to each individual line to make sure they didn't go over budget next year. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are, again, they're small cuts. They're not anything huge. It's not like we took 50 grand out of one account. Um, but these are like $1,000 cuts, $1,500 cuts, so on and so forth, up and down the line, to get those little tiny buffers out to say, okay, we're going to tighten up the, that line item a little bit and not have so much, or I shouldn't say so much, but the little contingency we had in each one of the little items. But Personally, I like the idea of keeping it the way it is, the tight budget. Um, I think an 18% increase is a, is a big chunk of change. Oh, sorry. I'm and sorry. somewhere along the line, you guys just, just got to deal with it. Uh, now, hopefully, everybody's got enough of a little cushion in there for the, like I say, if something happens, we get another $37,000 uh, problem. <laughs> I can guarantee you there's no $37,000 buffers in this right. in this budget. <laughs> I can well, guarantee it. Then all of a sudden, I mean, to me... If that ends up happening, you guys got to figure out what are we chopping. Yep. Just like every resident out there has to deal with. So, mm -hmm. a lot of residents probably keep a buffer in case something there's an emergency in their life. Yeah, well, that should have been taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> I, I'd, I'd like to keep the buffer. I guess is what I'm saying, Scott. No. Okay, so we have a motion to, and how much? Well, yeah, I don't need a motion. I it just need a motion. I, I need direction, yeah. So oh. there's, no, there's no discussion. Like, we're not approving anything here. I, uh, it sounds like the, the consensus of the council, at least the majority of the council, was make the $57,000 changes to get the tax rate the same. I got that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're good to go there. I just need to know, okay, if there's any direction to move something else with the expenditure cuts, which would have been 20, I'm going to use 25000 or whatever. Is there... A majority of the council would like to look at moving dollars from another fund to cover that. A specified EDA could be other ones, but 
Um, or is there more of a consensus to say, we're just going to take the cuts that we did there, 25000 and be done? When, I, when I'm looking at the things that were, you know, the areas that you found you could mm -hmm. trim the budget a little bit, I don't really feel like this is causing any real pain on, on any one of these line items. And so I, my feeling is we leave it alone. Yeah, I mean, I leave it as you have it uh, put it together. Listen, look at my piece. We have a majority. Okay, got a majority yeah. then. Majority. Sounds good. Anything else for the budget? Otherwise, we will s the twelfth will be a TNT meeting, and then we'll approve the final budget and call it a day. Cool. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay, on to items. What was it we moved after? C. Oh yeah, we need to do um, item C. Item C. Yep, that Post was moved day. after item J. So I had a couple questions about that. I don't, you have some? I don't mind, but it's mainly around that we needed to kind of land the plane on the budget before we start spending it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let me see if I can get to it. On some of the requirements on item C, I guess I had some. I, where did the seven years come from of experience? It just seemed like a very odd number. Mayor, members of council, um, when we're looking at filling that senior level position, looking for um, experience, obviously in that capacity. So seven years within the fire service and along with that, holding those other positions that were listed, or one of them. Pondering or, or no, that was it. Oh, that was okay. Fine. Okay. Well, <laughs> Thought you were looking for yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, no. oh, okay. That's it. No. So the seven just was kind of arbitrary, or no, it's not arbitrary. When you look at other positions that are advertised out there, we, we need to have a minimum of experience. Currently, the organization as a whole has three years or less. This command position is going to be, you know, in the absence of me as the chief, they're going to run the fire ground run the organization and so forth. So it's, yep. I guess it's similar to the vice president, if you will, of whatever organization. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, and w so we have desire, the, the associate degree, um, I know your position, well, we required it in advance, or a, a four-year baccalaureate. Why would we not require an associate degree here? It gives us an opportunity to gain more people with a little bit more they maybe don't have a bachelor's degree. And I guess the one example of that would be if you look at, at least from a state perspective, if they're going away from bachelor's degrees and looking more at experience, so is Walmart, just as a couple examples. Okay. This would also, excuse me, Mayor, that was, this would also give somebody the opportunity to grow into the position. So, um, you know, later on throughout their career, if we can promote that opportunity for growth within the position and uh, provide that as well. Okay. The, de the degree isn't required in anything in particular, just a de uh, associate's degree, right? No, it's in fire science. Okay. Well, so that was the desired, not yeah. Yeah, desired. Yeah. Okay. And it makes sense that it's yeah. related. I, I, yeah, and that was my question is why is it desired instead of required? I but heard that as well. Because it, I mean, desired, you're not going to get, you You may accidentally get desired, but if you set it as a requirement, it, then it's built in, baked in. But Often, in my experience and doing other um, interviews with other organizations, it's really just check the box, they got a bachelor's degree, and then you're moving on to other things. So it's not definitive, Sure, if, if that makes sense. Anybody else have anything? All right. So we need uh, 
uh, there's no numbers in there as far as are we coming up with the salary at, after we pick the person or I uh, know Zach and I have talked about that I find yep we will be posted with the position when it's posted um, I believe let me have to give me a second to find it I get the rough range but Zach can I'm not mistaken, Gary. I think this list is longer than the list when you got here. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Well, you got it made. You got it the, easy. The position will be posted um, as a salary position at um, grade 10, 88,884, 26 starting and ending 112, 466, 94. And then if you add the uh, package on there, there's probably another 25 or so onto it. That's just salary. Yep. Yeah, so right. that portion's oh, just salary. Then you got, it's 25 to 30% for benefits. Um, for a fire, it's higher. It's like 35% for benefits okay. because of the percentage of para. Yeah. Um, because firefighters or career firefighters, along with career police, um, retire are able to retire at 55. Yep. Okay, there you go. Yep. 55. Yep. Any other questions? Any motion and a second for item C? All motion. I'll second. How did I, how did I not know that that was going to happen? <laughs> wow. Huh? <laughs> Within seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor um, say, uh, huh? One little, one, one little discussion for the time being. This will get us our daytime duty squad for a while, right? Colts. Yeah. Yes. In, and in no. a sense, I, I mean, mean. In a sense, yes. Yeah. So the idea is that. You know, right now, I don't recall exactly. I think I have to go back to the numbers that Fitch provided, but um, we're getting about three point some odd number um, for response. Yep. And that 26.8% roughly is more during the daytime than at night. Right. So, yeah, we're looking to um, supplement that, of course, because we are shorter staffed during the day than we are at night. Correct. So, with yes. the people yeah. that respond, plus you, plus this individual, we'll have enough staff. To respond in a fire truck for so a period of whether time. or not it's enough or not. I mean, yep. we're just going to have during the day from from say roll. seven to eight or eight yep. to six. You're going to have two guys, but we're still going to need the on call people. No, I know that okay. you're going to get them. We'll have two permanent yep. guys that are here yep. Monday through Friday. I mean, I'm not expecting weekends, but yeah, no. right. Yeah, and, and that correct that gives us more of that flexibility to right. make sure right. ensure that we have somebody going, um, one or both. And if nobody else shows up, you know, on a medical, more than likely that shouldn't be an issue with law enforcement there to supplement if they're not busy. And then with North showing up at some point in time. So, yes. Um, but but this will put this duty thing to bed for at least two weeks. I'll go, I'll, I'll go a week. <laughs> oh, Any more discussion? Throw that in there. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries 5 0. And now we have item, let me see. Okay. Yep. Okay. 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 Item K was how old is it? All right. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Um, it was kind of hard to put this together. Zach and I talked about kind of the repurposing. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of a vision of kind of what we're looking at for the piece of property um, as of for the request to repurpose it. So that's kind of holistically the, the presentation. So we talk about a regional training facility. Uh, why is it needed? What's needed? Um, I'll have a picture coming up here in a minute. But we need a Class A burn building. This would really be a regional facility. It'd also be an opportunity for the city to be, a, this would be an enterprise fund, similar to the water fund um, in that capacity. So those dollars can be used to supplement um, the fire department or other <laughs> Um, parts of the general fund or whatever is needed um, but this just ca came up the other day um, this week where the East Metro training facility um, there's no availability and they're moving to open up trainings on Sundays there so the demand for use is extremely high um, the able facility that is down in Burnsville um, that's Apple Valley uh, Burnsville Lakeville Egan Egan, Egan, Edina, Edina, something like that. Edina? Yeah. Egan, Egan. 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 yeah, there is another one in uh, Edina, Edina, to your point, Scott, right off of 169. Um, that one does not 
um, use, they're not using it as a class A burn building. So the difference, let, let me clarify one thing. Class A burning is actually clean burning materials that we'd use. A B, a B burning facility would be a natural gas facility um, or propane. And my experience with those, the East Metro training facility does have one, um, but they have more problems with it because of the cold temperatures. And they're very expensive um, to maintain computers and everything else that are associated with it. Um, so again, we need to have a requirement of one live burn a year. Um, that's a requirement for fire um, just overall. And then we go through live burns for fire one and fire two. So again, a little bit more of the need, overwhelming demand, limited class A, no local fixed training facility. Um, that's a big challenge for us here in the city of Dayton. Um, currently, we've uh, caused Marty a little bit of headaches recently with uh, stirring some water up, utilizing um, the hydrant back here. If we could find a location to train to the south, um, that would reduce hopefully some of those um, burdensome calls that uh, Marty gets from residents and brown water and shaking the pipes and whatnot when we're trying to do some training. Reduced annual training costs. Um, we're paying uh, roughly the rate or more that we kind of outlined that $250 per hour um, to other agencies, not to mention travel time and that other costs associated with that. So to go to the East Metro training facility, um, for us, um, you have a basic cost because there's a minimum use of about uh, three hours. You get about 750 bucks in that, then travel time for firefighters, and then trying to figure out a mechanism for us to cover the city when we are away. And then a need to provide, uh, to provide real life training. Um, that's the biggest challenge that we have. Currently, mm -hmm. that's our biggest challenge that we have with the organization with. We have three years of tenure with the organization, but very little fire experience, if any, with a lot of the members within the organization. So this is, what's the vision? Um, this is a facility, uh, be about three or four stories. It gives us the high rise component on the left. And um, these are just different uh, configurations of this particular facility. This facility would provide us with three burn rooms, so one on each floor so we can simulate a single family residence, an apartment complex, or a commercial structure, all built into one. Uh, the proposed location is here off Dayton uh, Parkway and Territorial Road. Um, we've kind of talked about this briefly a little bit. Um, it is a prime real estate location without a doubt. I know some of the concerns <coughs> as far as vis visibility um, of gawkers, if you will, as smoke maybe are coming from the um, training facility. Um, I took the opportunity to look at kind of where the ABLE facility is. That's on Cliff Road towards the river in an industrial kind of area. Um, and then the East Metro train facility is right off of Century Avenue or whatever, if it's when it runs north-south. So there's a fair amount of traffic. Um, but you're not seeing a lot of smoke and flames on a regular basis um, in that capacity. So, um, This also would be the shared location of Fire Station 3 um, at some point in the future. Um, the six-ish acres that are there currently would accommodate um, both the training facility and uh, that shared location for Fire Station 3. Talk a little bit about um, a little bit what Fitch talked about, and this is um, from Fitch's presentation, but we talk about response time. And this is specifically towards medical response. So this is time versus defibrillation. Defibrillation, if I can't say it, if you feel somebody, you can't talk tonight. Um, but we have the recognition of the event in itself from that zero to two minutes. Um, we have about a 90 second dispatch time, providing they're not busy, so that can be 90 to 120 seconds, so two minutes. And then in our case, where they talk about en route, this is en route from um, the station itself to the resident's home or wherever we're going, if it's a commercial property. So in our case, we can live 10 minutes away from the station. And if you look at this travel time, the chance of uh, a successful outcome for that patient, it goes down seven to 10 percent each minute. So when you take into account travel time, here we're talking in this particular picture, 
um, out to 10 minutes, um, that's the time to shock, and it's taking us that time to get there at the moment the way we're currently staffed and the way we um, operate the organization. Very similar to time versus products of combustion. When we're talking about a fire, again, we have that detection of fire, smoke detector sounds. If it does have a residential uh, sprinkler system, it's a multifamily home, um, or if we have a larger home that did elect to put in sprinklers, um, that's roughly around that two to three minutes. Again, dispatch time, 60 to 120 seconds. Here they say a minute. Again, then we have that up to 10 minutes to get to the station. And then depending upon where the location is in the community, it can take us another 10 minutes to get there. So if you recall, on average from the Fitch report, uh, we have about a 12 minute response time overall. That includes the members coming from their home to the station and then responding to the location. Um, you see this, the map on the left is a current six minute response time. That talks about um, currently where we can get with our two locations in that geographic area um, in six minutes, the green shaded areas. Six minute coverage with three stations, and I say three stations for now, I'll get to something about that at the end of the presentation. Um, you can see where that extends, where we have uh, station one, station two, and then station three in the south. We look at that from an eight minute response time, you get a little bit more current coverage on the left, and you start to get more coverage with a three station model on the right. And then lastly, that current 10 minute response time that we have now, that's the area that we can currently cover with our uh, two stations where they're geographically placed. And then 10 minute coverage with three stations on the right, and then we actually have some overlap in that capacity. So that 10 minute coverage with three stations or even the current 10 minute response on the left, um, that's physically being in the station responding to the event in that 10 minutes. It's not including our response time from our homes. So this kind of gives you a bigger picture back to um, this, oops, this slide here when we talk about time versus products of combustion. <coughs> The one thing that I will say is when I talk about station three, um, the future proposed location is station two. So we talk a six minute coverage with station three, with three stations. It's hard to see on this, but um, in the middle, if you see the two dots on the, on the north there, it looks like North Diamond. Um, and then the third one down kind of in the area of, I don't know. Looks like it's in the park. <laughs> yeah, the parkway right in, in that way off of Fernbrook. Um, Realistically, the vision I see for us, and I think Fitch does too, is that when we add the, I think we can operate under two stations, ultimately is what I'm trying to get to. But the movement of station two is gonna be probably north or south thereabouts of public works probably mm -hmm. in that capacity in order to get where we wanna go um, from a six minute perspective anyways. And that's usually the standard um, within the fire service is at six minute response time with a staff station, meaning you have either a duty crew model or you would have um, full time firefighters that time responding six minutes out from that station. So we, we talk about three stations at the moment. That's more of a, a shorter term thing as we go to build station three and then probably close one of the other stations in that capacity. Zach, I'll let you okay. take this part here. Yep. Um, yeah, how do the numbers stack up? So the discussion we've had, which is on the property use of the repurpose of that property, and we've had this discussion, and this has been sent out to council, so this is not anything new. Um, we've looked at how much is it tax, how, how much do we collect in taxes on a commercial property, and how much are we going to get from this fire train facility as in revenue into the city. Um, so the left-hand side that we're looking at is just the straight-up calculation of, okay, the commercial property is based on X value. Um, it's going to give you this many city dollars in taxes. So that's how many dollars are going to go to the city. Now, it's not their entire tax bill. It's the city portion, and then this is the five-year total of how much you're going to collect in five years. To give you a perspective, roughly like a Red Lobster or an Olive Garden or a commercial-type business like that is roughly $2.5 million. So you could round up and use the $3 million valuation and say it's going to pay roughly this. Um, a Home Depot would be $10 million. 
So just for perspective of size and whatever else, and again, I pulled these numbers from Maple Grove, they might be a little off, but they're in the same county, so the tax dollars are not going to matter, but it's going to be the valuation. Um, they're going to pay about seventy-one grand. Um, the size of the property currently being six acres, there's no way you're going to fit a Home Depot on there. Mm -hmm. You might fit an Olive Garden or a Red Lobster, and I use those as general terms, not as in that's what we're looking at doing, but just in general, a commercial valuation is going to be somewhere in that $3 million range for the type of property that we're looking at. Um, you may be able to go to 4.5, but it really depends. So somewhere in this region of 20 to 30,000. Just as perspective of rental hours, we'd be looking at a $330 per hour rental facility rate. Part of that's going to be a training officer being on site. We'll charge about 80 bucks an hour for that person. And that's, that's what the current rates are at the East Metro training facility. And then $250 an hour for the rental. Uh, so 250 hours of rental per year is $82,000. Um, now, on the right-hand side here is the pro forma, and I'm going to try to, oh, I bet you I just hit click. I bet you I just hit stop sharing tonight. I'm going to try to move this thing so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. <clears throat> the pro forma is looking at, okay, we are going to have some expenses related to having that person on staff, having that training officer there, flowing water, um, you know, whatever it takes to run the facility. These numbers came from the East Metro training facility. Um, as best as I could get them, and then I just projected out how much it's going to increase in cost over the next X number of years. Um, I may be way off in these numbers, but if we do have increases in expenses, then we would obviously look at increasing the rental rate to offset those increases if we had substantial ones, inflationary ones, or whatever. So the net income is the main number that we're looking at. So I used 200 hours for the first year, which is we're anticipating 2025, 275, and then slowly wrapping up after that. This could go crazy, I don't know. Um, there's been a lot of interest from what I've gathered from Chief Hendrickson about usage of this facility from other communities, specifically in this area. And I'll use the example like Coon Rapids. Coon Rapids won't travel more than 15, 20 minutes away from their city to do any to do any training because what happens is then they lose all of their coverage that they're there right. during, the, during that time. And they don't rely on anybody, and I'm using that specifically only because I heard this specifically from Coon Rapids, is that they won't travel outside of that area, which means they're not going to East Metro Training Facility. I don't know how they're doing their training. I have no clue. But our, our thing would be within 20 minutes of them, and they would likely be on board of doing it because that's the closest facility. Now they are, I think Coon Rapids is a full-time department, or, or if they're not, they're dang close. Okay. So they're going to be using the facility a lot more than you know any other one would be, and I'm just using them as an example. But... Um, so we're looking at the bottom number here. Is what are our net income? So thirty-four grand in, in year one at two hundred hours is going to already beat a four and a half million dollar commercial property, um, and that's with expenses included. Um, then you go to the next year of fifty-three thousand. Um, what you can utilize those net income dollars for is what we would utilize them for is to offset tax levy. So that's what we would put them back into tax levy to either op offset operations of the fire department overall, whether that's staffing, whether that's salaries, equipment, repair and maintenance, whatever. You could also offset these net incomes to put them against larger equipment like we did, the fire tank engine, mm -hmm. the tanker that's needed, whatever else. You could utilize those dollars at any time. It would operate no different than a water fund or a sewer fund, as in it's operated on itself as an enterprise fund, but those dollars would be then utilized to offset any of that tax levy burden that the fire department would have on the, um, the general fund. I know Chief Henderson and I go back and forth all the time that they're a giant vacuum on the general fund because that's all they do is suck a bunch of money up and don't give any money back. Um, this is a way for the fire department to give money back to the city, um, which a lot of cities don't have the ability to do. So I think it's very important to look at this as, okay, is this the right location? And number two is do we need one? Um, and hope, that's the two questions we're looking for tonight yeah. from the chief and I. What, what did you say include, in the expenses include? Yeah, expenses include like um, some of the live burn stuff that you're doing, some of the clean burning things that you're looking for. Um, we would also offset some of the training officer time. So when we charge out that rate, we're actually going to put that person's time in there as well, towards yeah. that department versus coming out of the general fund. Yeah. So offset that time as well. Um, I don't know if there's a lot. There wasn't a lot of expenses that they gave me for East Metro Fire. The, there's not a ton of um, Mayor members of council, there's not a ton of expenses. Like I said, if you had a, a natural gas or a propane one, you'd have a lot more expenses in that capacity. And here we're talking about bringing pallets and straw in and burning within the structure at the end of the day. So once the structure is erected and built, um, it, there's nominal costs outside of just maintenance over time. What cost is that? The, the cost structure. of the structure. 
Current bid right now for that particular structure up there that you saw, um, 1.3 million. 1.3. 1.3 um, from the uh, company that we're looking at out of Wisconsin. Let's see if we can go back. That's not 1.3, but. No. <laughs> um, yeah, this structure here, and there's different things that can be done from a, if, if council or, or as, as a city, from an aesthetics perspective, you can make it look like the, route, the surrounding buildings and whatnot, but this right here is 1.3. This is their, I think they call it the fire marshal version, if you will, um, and it does allow us those three burn rooms and pretty much, it also give uh, chiefing of the, of the opportunity to train uh, there as well. Um, from obviously no shooting range, but other activities as mm -hmm. well. When so in the are those expenses, the, well, what do you mean? All those the one point three. Yep. Yeah, so that would be out of totally separate bucket of dollars. This would be we could we could operate it as putting it against the enterprise fund and have it pay it back over time. Well, um, it would take a while to do that, but we could do that. Um, what we were looking at, it, we did submit for a grant. To do this with the state so we did look at that um, that's going to be option number one we also have the ability that we have that five hundred thousand dollars that we have put together towards the land we could use that as a starting process for mm -hmm. this as well um, again we're trying to figure out the, if we utilize the tax forfeiture property on that corner or that on that location we would repurpose the location we would not have to buy it from the county we would just repurpose it yeah. Um, there's a difference between reconveyance. Reconveyance means we're buying it and we're going to do something just, with it. So we have to actually have. purchase it, which is that $1.5 million number that the county gave us. Um, otherwise, we'd use that 500000 to start this process. And if we don't get any other grant funding or anything else, then we're not going to do it until we fund it. But I'm still but. missing something. So this building is going to cost one point three. Correct. Whereas with change orders, it'll be closer to 2 but. Oh, So let's assume the $1.3 is right. Yep. If this thing's in today's dollars is making thirty two grand yep. a year, does that make sense? That's so that's yeah. I have a question related to the same kind of thing. Go back to the pro forma real quick. So in year one, you've got two hundred that's annual hours of usage. Is correct. that correct? That's correct. So that's like four hours a week? Yep. If is the demand higher than that right now? I feel that's, like it seems it's not it very seems, much demand. That seems it, low. It, it could be it's it's far greater than that. It's just okay. a matter of want to be conservative, conservative instead of saying, "Hey, we're going to make all this and, yep. and not I, at the end of the day." So I'm gonna, still even if you take the 32 and make it 50. Yeah, but you got to look at the ramp. So I mean, you got to look at the like at full ramp. It's at like 29, 20, 29. Really yeah, and if ramp, you like 500 six, hours, 600 hours, 600, 600 hours, which I have at 2030, I don't have a clue. I, I right, again, but but even yeah, we. But what does that do to the left? table also it, it, in those dollars in those year dollars i guess so the, the left hand table is these are the city taxes so the taxes dollars are here mm -hmm. these are currently debate on the current tax rate mm -hmm. if the tax rate drops at all these dollars drop <sighs> because we're not collecting them yep, from but, the business but if this tax rate right. drops it does not affect anything related to the rental hours so these rental hours are um actual numbers of what it would cost so, or what we would receive in revenue so if it's a thousand hours Yep. Of usage, let's say that is a thousand hours, and I don't know what that math is, but I'm going to say it's sixteen hours a week. Now we're at three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. We might have more expenses because we're going to be burning more pallets and straw and whatever else. Those, right. but the training officer is still going to be paid for. We're probably going to cover more of his time. To be honest, it's going to come less out of the general fund because he's going to spend more time down there. And I don't know if we have a training officer, you know, set aside. I'm just saying that this would probably be either a paid on call person or part of the assistant chief position or, or the chief or whatever. I don't know what that position is, but the expenses are going to go up, not nearly at the rate the revenues will, though. Yeah, I don't have 32, that. If it was used 32 hours a week, it'd be 1,664 hours a year. Correct. Yeah, and I don't want to I don't want to. I don't want to start with that either. I just Correct. I want to make sure I was reading. It's like 200 hours a week. That seems like a lot. So I want to make sure I was reading the 200 or number Correct. as an annual hours a year. year. I wanted to show yeah, that year. what yeah. we're going to do is even at 200 hours a use, which I wanted to show is that we're going to make more money. See, I'm hung product. up on that. But yeah. what, you're, what you're looking at is we're going to spend money to make money, which is a, what you're saying. A uh, big amount. Correct. Big amount. If we don't have a training facility at all, we're not going to spend the $1.3 million to right. do that. Correct. Which I don't disagree with you, what your comment is saying. I, I guess, yeah, the 1.3 isn't in any of those numbers. Correct. It is not. And it's going to totally wash that total net income. 
Sure. Yeah. Well, then I would have to time. do. I would have to reach out to East Metro to figure out how many actual hours they're using. What about? Um, so you said we applied for grants. Are we those did. grants pretty healthy? Um, Are they going to pay for a, a big chunk of that? Fairly good chance. We we did not apply for 1.3. We applied for 2.5 because we ex we anticipate to not get the full thing. And if by the time we get to this, it's going to be work in the system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to work it somehow. Yeah. No. That that. Yeah. Well, if we can do it with grant that, money, it makes a lot of sense, oh, right. whether it would weigh or not. What we need to know is, yeah. number one, do we want a training facility in Dayton? Is it something worthwhile? And number two, do we want it at this location? Is what we need yeah, that's what I'm looking at. The, the other thing, though, that comes into play is we're spending money today yes. for this training that we wouldn't be spending. I mean, you still have yep. staff time and, and um, you know, the cost that you carry regardless of where it is, but what we're paying in rental to somebody today I do not would, have would, that would go there. away. That would, that and is so correct. there's, you know, it's, it's not going to come in as revenue, but it's, um, it's not going to be saving. Saving. But it is savings. Yep. Yes, that is savings. We would not expend That's any more money. We're not going to pay $330 an hour to go to East Metro Training Facility to train on a Sunday for eight hours. So that's Which not is, in here either. That is not included in here either because I wasn't sure again what how many hours we're using. It depends on how many new firefighters we have and, and the training usage. And, and now, again, Chief Henderson and I talked today, and it sounds like there's a new requirement that they have to you have to do some sort of hours to burn or add a live burn or something. In a rail yeah. Yeah. There's an annual requirement for yes. live burn, and then for like last year I started the Northwest Suburban Fire Academy, so we have a conglomeration of like this year we've got Rogers, Osseo. Um, Dayton, Brooklyn Center, um, and uh, Orno that are coming in. So we have 15 to 20 new firefighters that are coming in. That will minimize that cost as well. That, you know, the way I look at it is probably taking it and we could, as I said to Zach today, we could have a different chargeback number. So whatever we used it, to your point, David, uh, we'd be able to track those dollars really what that savings was against the project, if you will. <coughs> And I did not do that, not knowing where we're. I put together a simple one as possible, not to get into the too much of the minutia and the details. If we're really interested about, okay, is this really something we want to do and it's something that the council wants to do, then I will go in and we will do an actual pro form of real dollars in real time because the amount of time spent on this is, again, is trying to figure out if it's even possible because I'm not going to spend 25 hours on something that council's like, no, we're not doing this thing. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Few questions I have on it are: um, um, Have we looked into the value of the of the actual property? I don't know. I mean, is there some business that would pay us two million bucks for that? I don't. I have no idea. Um, I, well, let's let's answer that, and Amy, you can chime in here. We can only take one point five million for it. We can't make money on tax Yeah, buy that I think there's questions that's, about that's, that. that I, just, I just don't. Buy, I don't believe that for a second. I'll, I'll defer to the city attorney. I'm not an attorney. <laughs> because, because the county just put a value of 1.5, and they're making buku money on that. It's the same so why is it okay with the county, <laughs> but not us? I feel like this is the Levy Street conversation As all over again. I think I thought we had this conversation. We had it again, but it I, is, I don't but, say we agree with it. that was 30 grand. This is 1.5 This is, I, this is I, So I don't disagree with any of that, but... Yeah. but the other question... Go ahead, Amy. I think we do need to separate these two. Before we get to that... Uh, you're required to do a, a live training thing once a year, correct? Yes. And from my understanding, you can bring in a fire trailer, a portable unit, you can. and do that. It's and not the state, realistic, The though. state pays for the whole thing. They don't pay for the whole thing. No. That's, what I was, that's the way it was explained. Well, By so whom, Scott? Who told you that? The Who's state curious? pays that. No, who told you what the state pays that? No, it is material. Who, I'm yeah. trying to figure out where you, is this it's like from, from a website a or something source. I can read? It's or from or? a reputable source. Not very. Just so do your the, own homework. Let, let do me do your own homework. Okay. I was, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> let me explain. The other, the other issue I have is if we're only budgeting four hours a week out of this thing, the demand isn't really there. I mean, if this is such a great deal, why didn't Champlin, Rogers, St. Michael, uh, Anoka, why, why don't all these cities have one? That's... It just but doesn't tell me their use is needed. Well, when they're using, there's only one training facility, Scott, and they have to go there on a Sunday, the use is needed. There's many other communities that have looked at it. The Hero Center, I'll give that as an example. That's down in Cottage Grove, I believe. That facility was designed for police and fire. It's more uh, police eccentric, 
than fire. Fire is kind of the afterthought. Maple Grove has started to look, try to look at this as well. Uh, Spring Lake Park Blaine Mounsey looked at it when Chief uh, Charlie Smith was there. Um, so there's a need for it. It's just a, me a mechanism of, as Zach already said, you can only travel so far. I can't take the whole city and go to East Metro Training Facility. So we're using a modest amount. You would be irritated if I came back and said we're going to make all this money the first year and then we didn't. So the reality is there's a need for it, but we want to be modest in our projections. One other thing, the Minnesota Board of Firefighting Training and Education, they will pay for a live burn. I've made a request for next year for us to do a live burn. Mm -hmm. So that live burn will pay $1,500. If I have a house to use, or I can bring in a trailer, that's not realistic, in my opinion. You're going into no different than what we have down oh, at yeah. there already. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mimic what I showed you in the picture. Yeah. Is there we got a barn that we got a barn you can burn. Whose barn? <laughs> Scott's Marty's. <laughs> Scott's got about three of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little close to the right. Have we talked to these other communities? It, it does strike me as out if there's such a need. Maple Grove's got space. Rogers has got space. Um, Otsiko's got all these municipalities have space. So are they also looking at this? So Rogers, um, talking to Chief Ferens, um, Zach and I looked at it from a enterprise perspective. When you get into like the um, Able facility, then you get into the whole JPA thing, which becomes rather hectic. Now we can ask for partners without a doubt, because I know Rogers would jump in with us. Um, but then you have to try to figure out, no different than the East Metro training facility, we're, we're not going to be looking at this pro forma by any shape of the imagination to offset that. Um, it really kind of depends on how you want to approach it. But there's a need without a doubt. Um, but it's just a matter of, do we want to use the dollars ourselves back into the general fund, or do we want to try to, I guess, diversify the 1.3 million dollars is no more than you allowed two weeks ago for a fire truck this is something the fire truck isn't going to give you anything back into the general fund but this but one. it is still 1.3 million dollars it's still 1.3 yes I mean, there's, so, a, there's going to be all kinds of 1.3s coming up probably um, be more than that no i know that three so I, i'm chief, open to yeah. the idea but you guys we, we need a lot more chief chief this. henderson and i didn't want to come up with okay spend all this time trying to get reports um, sure. resolutions of support and stuff for doing this regional training facility if there was no appetite for it from council again I, I, trying to make sure we're I don't know I, I, I just want to see some numbers and and the real demand because right now I don't I can see, get I don't I, what I can it. do is I can reach out to East Metro Fire and say how many hours did you use last year how many hours you had this year because if they're opening up on Sundays my guess is that they're going they're got to be over that 1600 hours a year at least and personally I I'd, I'd get on board with some of the locals the neighboring cities and, and partner with it. I think, I think the, exactly. the downside with that is is that then when you go into that situation, any decision we want to make about that, we have to get through three or it's four city councils board. versus yeah. just one or board that runs it, which well, has a whole a bunch of bureaucracy to it, which Once is going to make it. Once it's built, then you're not going to have that bureaucracy. Well, well, you, you I would yeah, disagree with that. <laughs> well, yeah, you <laughs> will. <laughs> all of the Amy's from all the individual cities have to be on the same page, which does not happen. Mm -hmm. We're a long ways away from doing this today, but... So I think I'm open this, to this is something that you guys anyway. sent us like four or five months ago. This is not new no. to the council. We received nope. this a while no. ago. No. So we've, we've, we've I knew this was coming right. 11 yeah. months ago. Yeah, so we've, we've had time to look at it, right? So I think the question you have in front of us is do we think a, Number one a question. training facility yes. like this would be welcomed by the council in the city? Not today, yes. not, but yep. would it be welcome in the city? That's, yep. I think, the first question we have to first answer. First question correct? you need to answer, yes. I'm generally okay I think I'm with it because I think I, I understand right you're, you're projecting about as low as you can go with four hours a week of utilization. Mm -hmm. right. And so, you know, it seems to me that, you know, with a little bit of, of marketing to our neighboring communities, you could get some commitment from them not to build the building um, or own it, which sounds like that's where the mess begins, but rather, you know, that they would commit to uh, using it. Um, once it's once it's available, and and you kind of wonder why Rogers and uh, even Maple Grove wouldn't if it's that much closer to get to. But um, I think that there's there's work that you know could be done there to to get a higher level of 
you know, how many heads are we talking about? How many hours? You know, is it is it realistically? Or at gonna least, yeah, an agreement. Be, from um, them that they wouldn't also put up their own facility and then suddenly we're out. You know. Yeah, I know but they they're, they're going to have the same struggles. I think that yeah. we are is how many of these do you need? You know, and it seems like it's kind of a regional, a regional thing. If there's none in the Northwest Metro, why would somebody build a second one? Um, have we gotten any letters of support from the other chiefs? <laughs> yeah. I know that was something that... Maple Grove was. So I've um, brought it up the last time at the County Fire Chiefs Association meeting. Um, however, before I put together a formal letter out to, which will go all through Hennepin Chiefs and also Metro Chiefs, I wanted to come to Council so I was okay. wasting my time there. So I think that'd be helpful if we had, I mean, I would feel better if we had, a you know, 20 chiefs that said, yeah, we'd be willing to use this facility, we support it, we think it'd be great. I think that would help build confidence yeah. and like, okay, yeah, this is how often they need to use it, this is what it looked like. I think we need that information. I think that was when we met with um, Denny Nadu and John Hoffman, that was something they had asked for too, is if we're going to get grants for this, we're going to need letters of support from yep. other, mm -hmm. from neighboring chiefs. going to tell you whether you're using it for, it for more than it's four hours a week. Yeah, 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 that'd be good too, yeah. yeah. So I'm on the same page with that. So I think that like would help make the numbers. There's some support to at least better. go forward and get some yeah. more. Okay, My sounds like reservation is, better. quite honestly, the location. You know, I've always hoped for higher use than a building that we um, burned down, you know, every other day. Um, for for that location, it's it's our one exit off the interstate. And yeah, so it sounds like we have a general consensus, or at least a majority, of looking forward to it. So we'll, we'll put some more work into getting the pro forma done, getting some more hours done, get some letters of support, bring it back to council, and then... So the second question is, what location? Um, currently, we're able to utilize this location for free, as it costs anything. If we don't go here, we likely have to buy land. Um, mm -hmm. okay. And we would look to buy land to do both things at one time, because it makes it kind of... It's, it's just more efficient to have them both at the same spot, as in Fire Station 3 and the training facility. Now we're not looking to build Fire Station 3 before the training facility. We'd build the training facility first and then build the training facility or the Fire, Fire Station 3 after that. We probably would have to build a small shed or something to keep the engine on site. Um, we're not looking at anything extravagant but just enough to keep the engine on site so we can have it there ready to be available at the training facility. So the question next is do we repurpose this property or do we look at something else in the area? There's not a set location that's Ideal, I think you could pick anywhere in this general vicinity, vicinity and call it a day um, within 30 seconds or a minute of this location, unless I'm far off on that, Chief Hendrickson, let me know. But No, and I guess the other thing is, too, is to keep the put the training center aside, and let's talk about Station 3 for a minute. Because the reality is, is that before my time, you guys have set aside $500,000 for land, and we're three years past that now. And obviously, as you guys know, we continue to it continues to increase in the supply of available properties within the area keep dwindling. The biggest thing that we need for both the fire station and the training facility is a good su supply of water. Obviously, the, our old public work site would be great. However, that's not scheduled for sewer and water for many years. So outside of the training facility, we really need to start to move on Station 3. We're three years out at a minimum before you see a structure up. So we're into 27, 28, and we need to start to plan in advance of that. So we're way behind the eight ball already. I'm running out of space. I need training, training space outside of either council or the activity center. So that's the other part of this too, is I wanna to focus a ton on just the training facility. That's one aspect of it, but probably Bigger is really the need for that station three in the big picture as we continue to talk about that and kind of kick that can down the road. As far as property, as far as getting the piece, I mean, to me it, it's going to be a simple deal to negotiate that into some particular development and say, hey John, I need three or four acres or whatever you're asking for. I mean, like you say, there's four acres right down here that would be the perfect spot for someday, some station or whatever. In the sure. old, it's perfect. We, we own it for zero. Uh, and I think you can get that incorporated. In, all you got to do is ask for it. So, that's a PUD. But we need a bit new development to come through willing to do that. 
Oh, it's going to happen eventually. But in the past three years, it hasn't happened. Well, That's we my point. We haven't pushed for it either. We haven't pushed for it. We had the money for it. We didn't push for it. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is we tried to buy land before I was on council. I think last, uh, like Just a one. year ago, we looked at three different properties. Yeah, that mm -hmm. we, got, we got kind of jacked and, around. And none of those were willing to sell, correct? I wasn't part of the conversation. They're all held behind closed door, but that's my understanding from reading the, the minutes. You know, at least one. Yeah, one of them was on board, but the price just it, price yeah. Yeah. fluctuated all of a sudden. And correct. Yeah. So we've been trying to buy land, and we can't. No one wants to sell it to us. We haven't really aggressively yeah. went after it. Yeah, I know. One property. had some discussion at some point about the Lee property on the north side. Yep. Yep. Of 117th, is that gone and That anywhere? development kind of went to the um, has it, Yeah, has it come to fruition because the... There's been no interest in it. Seven or eight percent kind of finance. stalled everything. Correct. Yeah. Yep, correct. It's a finance issue. And so it's that's contingent on that land being developed. Then. Correct. Yeah. And unfortunately, we need a development to do it. Uh, you know, the land could be gifted to us, but it's not as simple as gifting the land to us. It's they have to go through a trust process, and it, you know, and then we had and word of that did get around that there was a plan for the Lee property to try to do that on that Lee property, and the Brayburn Trails development went crazy because they didn't want a fire station across the street. Are we talking about a fire station or a fire station and training facility? Both. Would yeah. you want that in the middle of a, a residential I development? I was going to say a residential, residential, probably not, yeah. but yeah. I, not I, I also don't think you necessarily want it on the entrance to our city. So, I mean, if we can look at some of these industrial developments, yeah. Again, I don't know that we've we've tried to negotiate this at all in any of these mm -hmm. that we have had for the past X number of years. So not, any, not for sure none of the commercial ones. I, we right. may have talked about it in some of the residential ones. However, it and I would say, and I would mention it would be you know you're going to put a fire station slash fire training facility, and at that time would have been a fire station because that's what we would have known next okay. to a residential house, and that's. Some people either love it or they hate it, yep. and it's it's never in between because they either love it the fact that the fire station is so close, right. or they hate it because they hear the sirens and the lights and everything else all the time too. So, yep. it's just how it works. And I'm pretty sure all the commercial entities aren't going to like it either. Correct. Yeah. I mean, the, if we ask a commercial entity to give up some of their land, they're going to say, "No, I got to use it for my right. building." So I mean, it would have to be. You're likely looking somewhere at off the industrial or somewhere off the main drag, anyways. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we've had these. And then we're also limited. We'd love to put it, like I said, we have a great location just on the road here for a, this tr fire training facility and whatever else. It's great. However, there's no water there, and so it doesn't, it doesn't work then. <laughs> are we talking about the public works? Yeah, yeah. correct, yeah. yep. Yeah. That's a great spot for a training facility. Yeah, it's later we get really, something yep. Yeah. But, again, there's no water there, so we can't utilize it for that. So we are limited in where we can look to for these things because yeah. – we don't have water throughout the whole city either. We only have water either in the south or in the north, um, right. e w east, um, and so we we limit on we're limited on spots. We can't use anything in the northwest because there's not enough f flow there or anything to do anything with. So um, that limits the number of locations that we can really look to do this type of facility and or a fire station or whatever in general. I don't think it's ask a question. Think it's it's Go ahead. Since Amy's here, um, so. We moved ahead with the county to reconvey this as so. If you fire reconvey use. it, if you reconvey it, means we're buying it. If you repurpose it, that means repurpose we use it. it. Okay, I'm using the wrong word. Yep, that's okay. Um, so repurpose it to that use, and it's now designated as public yep. government well, government facility. Kind of what it is now, and it doesn't cost us anything. Nope. Somebody comes along and says, you know, I've got this other land over here. I'd really like this property instead for my, you know, Dennis is going to add a, a new R and D facility to Medtronic, and they're going to they're going to go so. go right there, go right there. I know this is my dream world, <laughs> but somebody comes along and wants that as a commercial property um, mm -hmm. because of its location, and they've got another spot that is acceptable with water access and so on. So it's I'm sure this is a handful of places maybe, but um, my question is really, if that were to come to come to be, can we then say, well, we're not you know, legally then want to make, make this property over here that we're swapping for now the fire station public use kind of thing, and we're changing the definition of what this one is. 
Yeah, I'm not AKA, AKA, yeah I, th I think what you're saying is a land swap, but change the tax forfeiture from this property to another property. Is what you're saying, correct? Like the tax forfeiture status. Yeah, I don't think well, we can. The, uh, yeah. Our our planned use of mm -hmm. it can that move without us, without us getting into a a mess with the county or somebody else over it. If I understand the question. I, I, the tax forfeiture status of the parcel stays with the parcel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't tie to the use. It simply is a. It means that the the city currently has a right to use the property under what's under a, a commissioner's deed or a use deed. Um, after the forfeiture process is complete and Hennepin County holds it in trust for the state, the state issues the use deed to a local go government unit for a public use or, you know, a, sp a specified, you know, one of the uses in a, in a long list of possible public uses like a, a public facility um, like we've talked about here. Um, so once that use deed is issued, um, I don't know of a situation where maybe if you're suggesting that the state would would take it back and say, well, now we want to sell it, to, you know, for a higher use and 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 take the profit. That I, I don't think that's permitted under the statute. Once that use deed is issued, it it stays in that use as designated until the entity that holds the use deed, in this case, the city of Dayton, wants to change it. Um, or turn it back, or you know, uh, acquire it like like what happened with the parcel over on Levy Street. Um, so I don't know if I'm answering your question specifically, but I think Can you ask there, if someone wanted to swap. You could, there's location. no swapping right. that could occur. Yeah, I don't yeah, think that, that's that essentially that. my question. So, okay, so uh, I, I think, who, think years back we were also told that there was a time limit if we do use a tax forfeit of property as one of these public use things mm -hmm. for some amount of time it could be reverted back to um, sellable property yes after the um the, after I, I, i'll pull up the statute and look at it quickly but i believe it's after 30 years maybe 40 years in in that under that right. use deed it by just by operation of the statute it becomes the, the property of the city i think the number we were given was 10 so that's significantly different well let me let me double check okay. it's been a while since i looked at that I have if it's 10 we're getting close well no because we didn't apply for the use or we didn't yeah. and and that was the discussion is that when these things went up we should have locked on to them at that point but we did not yeah, do you remember what happened I remember what year we did the use were you on council dennis uh, which one for this one when we did the use deed for the public parking on this one. Oh, we did do it? We did no. a use deed on this one for public parking. Oh, yeah. yeah no, we that, did. Was pre, that was I. That's got to be, it was, yeah. I don't know if I was back then, but it, it's it got to be in the 2012. I, th to I thought it was 14 or 15, but I could be it wrong. could be. Well, then yeah. that number is yeah. very important. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if that's the case, you're not that far away it from having done it. done in 2015. Well, if, that's if the answer's 10, if the answer's, if the answer's 10. 40, then you're right. No, <laughs> I'll be long gone by 30. The number mattered. Yeah. And Mayor and Member to call just to clarify too, I'm not locked into this particular property. Yeah. We're looking yeah. at it from yeah. obviously a least expensive perspective, at least at the moment. Granted, I s the flip side, if you're able to profit from it, which I don't believe we are, but um, you know, just someplace in that vicinity, if you would, um, that have sewer and water. In the end, it, I don't think it hurts to get some numbers together, and then it doesn't matter which parcel you're doing it on for now. <laughs> Because in the next two months, we don't have to make that decision. No, yeah, this is not something that we need to make a decision on, like two months. But we need to do have we do need to make a decision in the next six months because it's going to take a while to plan the thing and make sure we have it all moving forward. And we want to try to get the facility operating. We need the facility today to uh, train. Maybe but, maybe we do it. I don't. Yeah. We, well, we physically do as the city of like the city of Dayton firefighters need it because when they train here, it shakes up Marty's pipes, and then we get tons of calls about. <laughs> All kinds of stuff in the pipes, and then and then Marty Sorry. gets mad at us for doing it, and not me. But 
Not um, to mention the mosquitoes at City Correct, State. yeah. And then okay. when they I'm open up okay. all the doors and stuff. So they need a training, training facility today. But. When we oh train God. in poor, poor fire. You, poor you. Well, it's not me. Uh, well, you're not doing it's, it. Well, then no, you we're can doing come it. sit at my desk. Yeah. Mosquitoes. Yeah, well, they opened up all the doors yeah, here at City me. Hall because they had to train through it. So all the doors were open all night long while they were training. So all of the mosquitoes came in the building. So the next morning when we came in, there's a million mosquitoes in this building. It was pre, so pre loaded gun. It's great. Love that. Mayor, it is 30 years. Okay. That does not so help. It doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help. So I just bring that up as we do need to move in a direction. I mean, we're, we're like I said, regardless if it's this, uh, we have a need. We have our commercial properties to the south, um, and we're running out of space. I'm, I'm out of space currently today based on the current infrastructure that we have. So Is there a – sorry. Go ahead. Is there an ask, Zach, for us to vote on something, or now you have no, direction? No. We just need a direction. Okay, because I think it would be helpful for staff to maybe it, I'm I'm going to speak for myself. Others can say yes or no, but to look at this and other neighboring area properties that would be useful to do this, and then see, get a short list of them. Then maybe we use a realtor, or whomever mm -hmm. that yep. we. I would prefer not city staff go knock on the door. Correct. I think hopefully we've learned a lesson from that one, um, and that you know the realtor goes out and. See as if there's any yeah. willing sellers in that area that we could then use and go from there. That'd be my recommendation, but I'd like to hear what others have to say. I, I will tell you that we won't go knock on any more no, doors because no. the price never gets any lower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that, I think that makes some sense. Yeah, I guess for yeah. me, you know, I, I like the concept. I think it needs to be, you know, um, refined in terms of the financial performance pieces mm -hmm. of it, and I think you can do that. So I, I think, for me anyway, I think it's worth moving ahead on. Uh, again, I don't, I don't love this location for it, but um, I don't think that should stop you from moving ahead on, on it, because we've got still got the, you know, whether we do this or not, we still have a fire station out in our future, and yep. and mm -hmm. so we've got a land, you know come to some conclusion on where that's going to be and get that land however we get it mm -hmm. whether it's this or we buy something um, sounds like the the swap in this for something else is a, a non-starter so um we also need to keep in mind that it may make sense to separate the station from this training facility mm -hmm. i mean again if we get a chunk of land in a residential area Pretty sure they won't like that training facility either. Mm -hmm. No, but a station, I don't know that they're as nearly as concerned about. But and there will be some squawking, but there's going to be squawking. I'd agree. I mean, they don't have to be in the same spot. I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, they but can be in two sense. separate locations. Yeah. Any right. other comments, questions? Yeah, I don't know. Did you ask them? No, I'm good. Uh, Everybody, I think we get some numbers together and look at it again. I mean, yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, no way. Yep. Back to item. E. Yep. E was what? Police officers. Oh. So the the conversation what I had was uh, we're hiring two and a half next year, which I think Zach confirmed. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason we're not posting for all three now? Because my understanding is it takes a while to find an officer, mm -hmm. and so if we post for them now, chances of them being hired and on before. Uh, March is probably low, which then, if it's March, offsets the cost of the half year, kind of pretty down the middle. Um, we will post for um, until filled. So if we get three or four applications, we'll keep going with the application. So hopefully we have somebody in line for when um, the June hire comes available. So we're going to post for all the positions. It will just stay <coughs> rotating through. So you're going to post for all three. My yep. concern is if we find three good applicants, say, in March, I'd hate to lose the third applicant between March and June because we waited three months. Uh, the background will take that long for the third applicant. So, But if we find that person in the next two months, it's still going to take that long? Yeah. Okay. So we're not going to hire any of these officers until mid-year anyways, I'm hearing you say. Uh, if I can get two good ones right away, which I don't think I'm going to, okay. um, we probably could get through their backgrounds within – would probably see a March hire. Okay. Um, the third one would probably be a June background. Okay. So are you, yeah. So Chief, are you looking to add posting for three full-time officers then? So then by the time you have one, how about just post until positions are full? All three of them. Oh, yep. 
I'm okay with that. I, I just know it takes a long time, and so I'd rather not wait until June to post the next one, and they won't start then until September. Yeah, we would have posted case. that in probably February. Yeah, I would just post them all now. If we have good candidates, I think it's worth us I, looking I at. I would let him do his job as he wants. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what only said two, so I just wanted to make sure that we weren't cutting ourselves short. Sure, that's what he's doing. All right. But we're approving the posting for all three positions. Correct? Yeah, why are we approving posting? Because you have we we cannot go out and post for a position until it's been approved by council. This right. is no different than approving the bids and stuff. That, that like was that. the hiring. The posting no. was kind of a yeah, go do that. Okay. Mm, nope. Okay. Item. So we e. po just we're posting for the necessary officers. Yep. Which is three, not two. Yeah. That's listed. Whatever, whatever you choose. Yeah, I think the the budget piece of it, I mean, given what the chief just said in terms of it's firing hiring, we're talking about a point five FT, so six months of some you know, of yep. that cost. And if each of these three ends up taking a couple of months into the new year to get where that's already covered, if they're yep on board by the end of February, all of them, you've got your six months. Agreed. That, that, that relates to the budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you I, got it. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. That's okay. All right. So we're doing E as is? Yes. All right. No. I need no, no, three no. for three. Three. Yeah. It says two. Okay. It says two. We'll do three. All right. We're doing E with three. I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Dave. Second. second. Matt. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries 5 0. And if there are no objections, we're adjourned. And we're adjourned. <laughs>